Прийшли окупанти до нас в Україну Форма новенька, воєнні машини Та трохи поплавився їх інвентар Байрактар Байрактар Російські танкісти сховали з кущі Щоб лавтим посорбати довбані щі Та трохи у щах перегрівся на бар Байрактар Приперли зі сходу до нас барани для постановлення великої страни. Найкращий пастух баранячий хота. Байрактар. Байрактар. Ніхто води всяке озброєння, різні потужні ракети, машини залізні у нас на всі доводи є коментар. Байрактар Байрактар Вони захопити хотіли на зразу А ми зачаїли на ордів образу З російських бандитів робить примар Байрактар Байрактар Російська поліція справи заводить Там пивцю рашистів ніяк не знаходить Хто винен, що в нашому полі глухар Байрактар Байрактар Веде пропаганду кремлівський урод Слова пропаганди ковтає народ Тепер нове слово знає цар Байрактар 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 Oh. 
Hello, everyone. I'm the Enforcer, and I'm accompanied by Enforcer Matt. And good evening, folks. It's Enforcer Matt, and welcome back to day 756 of the news. And it's good to see you all once again. And the Russian army is getting absolutely schmacked in the Belgorod region. And it's good to see you all once again. And, of course, we're going to be covering the past 24 hours of the news of the war in Russia as the free Russian army has engaged the Russian armed forces in full force today and won. It is unbelievable. They actually won the Battle of Kazinka today, and we're going to be covering that news and everything else that happened, including the major attack at Ingles Air Base, the attacks that have been occurring pretty much all over uh, along the Ukrainian front lines today. It has been a day filled with endless success. An unbelievable amount, and I cannot believe that we get to watch the Russian army fail on a battle that is on Russian soil. We got to see the video footage that of today, and I'm going to be bringing y'all right into Belgorod, where the Free Russian Army is operating, to be able to show you all this stuff, because it is legitimately nuts to see. To quickly summarize what we have been seeing over the past 24 hours in the area, it appears that the front lines have largely stabilized. Russian reinforcements from the army have been brought into the area. However, the Free Russian Army is still uh, continuing to bombard military targets within the area of the city of Belgorod, and we're also starting to see that the Russian army is returning fire, apparently engaging the Free Russian, Arti uh, the Free Russian Army with their own artillery, and not only that, inflicting a good amount of, uh, of damage to the surrounding areas, but still not uprooting and routing the Free Russian Army forces that are found on the Shebekino and Gryvron fronts. Once again, the Tekino front has largely been silent. We do know that the Free Russian Army is still holding Tekino, but there's really nothing happening up in this area. Moving on down into the first clips that we got, it appears that the Russian army has attempted to uh, decisively defeat the Free Russian army on the Gryvron front, but completely failed today. And we were able to see that in three separate video and picture clips that we were able to find of this battlefield today. Starting off first and foremost, we got to see a picture of the battlefield, and we also got to see a Free Russian army soldier here in this picture showing the devastation that has already been caused to the town of Kazinka and Gryvron, really one and the same, and also showing that they are still there as of today. We can see here that the guy has a AK-74, a uh, fairly standard one from what we can tell, uh, and also here on the wall it says uh, Slava the Cossacks, pretty much, at the top, and then it says uh, RDK, Russian Volunteer Corps, dash forward, or Verot, or something along those lines. Once again, showing that they are still there and they still have the intention of holding this territory, and not only that, pushing even deeper into Russia and taking more villages as time passes. We then got to see, after this picture was taken, that the battles began to unfold fold during this day. This is something that we have to say is very interesting because I have to bring you out to the first clip of the Russians attempting to counterattack the free Russian army and push them out of the area and completely failing and of course ending up causing themselves some very high amounts of friendly fire. So let me show you all this little clip right here. Here comes our Russians. They're coming up in an armored car right here. And for some reason, the video clip pauses, but then they dismount the vehicle and start running towards the house. From what we're told, there's apparently RDK fighters inside of the building. And the Russians are attempting to storm the building and, and pretty much flush them out. So, we can see here that the third guy in the column, oddly enough, the third guy in the column, or the lineup, decides to whip out an RDG-5 hand grenade and throw it into the door. He misses, and the grenade bounces off the door frame and right in front of them. Oh my, that's a bad combination. And we can see the grenade right there on the rubble. It's right there. You can actually see it roll oh. for a second. So watch. <laughs> he throws it, bink, and it falls right there. So then oh they all go Oh my running. god, he tripped over the man. Yeah. <laughs> and then this guy up here near the door, he just accepts his fate. The grenade explodes. Oh. Oh, damn, it really got them. Yeah, they committed friendly fire already at this early part. And now you see the RDK's, oh. uh, RDK's FPV drones coming in and taking out the rest of the Russians. Well, they got a good start. They uh, they took themselves out, and then they the, the other guys finished them off. <laughs> imagine, imagine trying to uh, conduct close quarters combat um, inside of a building or near a building, 
and you fail door breaching, the literal first part of of house clearing or room clearing. You can't even breach the door because the grenade ends up killing about a half of the unit. Man, this is ridiculous. Like, you can't win uh, making mistakes like that. No, <laughs> no, you can't. You just can't. But we can now see the RDKs continuing to watch these Russians. We can also see that apparently the car that they were brought in on isn't even an armored car. It looks like some kind of a, of a non-armored SUV. Something I would say similar to a Tacoma. But the video clip ends there showing that the Russians are already taking fairly high losses just in the small group alone in the first instances of actual combat in between the Free Russian Army and the Russian Army itself. And they're already off to a very bad start. And it got even worse as it went on. We then got to see that the Russian Volunteer Corps then obliterated a larger contingent of Russian forces during the battle today. This clip also came out from the uh, from the Free Russian Army, or specifically the Russian Volunteer Corps, a part of the Free Russian Army, and it's in pretty much the same part of town. As a matter of fact, you can actually see here this specific church, or as they would call it, a basilica, and we're going to show you all something very interesting here. In this picture, you can actually see that basilica in the background. It's right there in the picture. So this is actually in the same area um, that this picture was taken in, showing that all of this is a part. All, all three clips are a part of a continuous battle that occurred today in between the Free Russian Army and the Russian Army itself. So... Now with that in mind, now making sure that we all know that this is geolocated and actually showing that the Free Russian Army is inside of Russia, here is the clip of the larger part of the battle that happened today. Chad music ensues. Um, but we can see here some Russians that have made it into this one area and they're climbing out of a window. And, and for some reason they are tactically climbing out of the window here when they could have just walked through the house and come out of the door right over here, which probably would have been a lot easier for them. But nevertheless, the Russians are doing their Russian things. Sadly, they didn't get to do him for long because the artillery immediately landed in the area and started to hit the building. We now see a drone deciding to do the window challenge where it flies through the window and then explodes inside the house. It appears to have succeeded and the Russians are now crying. We can see the Russians probably screaming now as the artillery continues to land all around this house. And we can also see that apparently these other two complexes, uh, both to the right and left side of the screens, are apparently controlled by the Russian Volunteer Corps, a part of the Free Russian Army. We now see this one Russian running around the courtyard in absolute panic as another FPV drone comes in and takes him out specifically. Screw that guy in particular. Uh, we can now see the RDK firing RPGs into the building. And we can see them continuing to show more Russian movements moving into the area, once again showing that the Russian army is here in full. And also, man, you don't worry about that. They asked that 30 times. <laughs> so I did. So that that's good and done with. But anyways, we can see the next drone coming in. And now, Matthew, the house is completely engulfed in flames. So I'm assuming that there isn't really a lot of Russians in there anymore uh, because it's probably a little too warm for them. But the artillery is landing still, dead on the head. And we now see this in a uh, thermal camera as well, showing the fire continuing to rage and causing significant damage to the building. We still don't see any Russian forces uh, leaving the building, but we did see some of them get lost outside. We now see some kind of a vehicle that rolled up close to the building getting hit. I'm assuming from RDK fire that may be a Russian vehicle. Man, that house has got lava sitting on top of it based on what I'm seeing. Man, I'm telling you what, man. The floor is made of lava. The roof is made of lava. Everything in that house is made of lava. Uh, but we can see the RDK surrounding the building. We can also see that the vehicle that was hit is confirmed to be a Russian forces armored vehicle or some kind of a vehicle for that matter. The fire continues to burn and we're not seeing any Russians leaving the building either. We now see one of the Russian vehicles moving out of the area, and we see another Russian running for the lake. Apparently, he's going to go for a swim. Uh, and we can see more of them running towards the lake.
You see them just kind of chilling around there. It looks like they may be trying to regroup on a lower area of ground where the RDK can't see them and fire at them. Man, call this Camp Crystal Lake. This lake be getting a little bit, uh, a little bit weird. You know what I mean? Man, this this lake be uh, <laughs> Russians be drowning in this lake. Uh, but beyond that, that's the end of those clips. And once again, showing the Battle of Kazinka as it was unfolding today. Once again, showing that the Russian army is making no successes and trying to push the free Russian army out of the out of the towns of Kazinka, Glotovo, and Grybron. And once again, confirming that there is really no actual progress being made on getting the free Russian army out of Russia. It appears that they're going to be there to stay. And these areas are now going to be an actual battlefield inside of really the entire area but moving on really quickly so that way we can see if we can find out where this basilica was it appears that this basilica is right here in particular uh that means that we are able to confirm at a bare minimum that the entire area of kazinka and all the way up to zarichi provo is controlled by the free russian army which is actually uh, a little bit more luxurious than what we were allowing or permitting for the free russian army's control so we're actually going to be adjusting this a little bit so let me make sure to edit that and we're going to scoot this up a little bit farther so that way we can make sure that the front lines are as accurate as possible here on the stream. So let me make sure to do that. And there we go. And this is what we believe the current zone of control looks like at the moment for the Free Russian Army. And once again, they are not being uprooted in this area. Moving on from that and over to the Western Front near Shepikino, which is usually the more active of the fronts, but today was slightly quiet. We also got to see that a Romanian unit has apparently joined the battle uh, as a part of the Free Russian Army and is helping to try and liberate the Belgrade Oblast. Here's the clip. Very quiet intro. Very stealthy like. Never mind. Uh, so we're going to be muting that, <laughs> but we can see uh, some interesting armored cars. Yeah, what kind of armored car is that? It looks familiar, like we've looked at those, but they're not used quite often. I could not tell you. I, I couldn't tell you. I was looking at those. I was like, they look familiar to something, but I wouldn't know the name off the top of my head. But we can see them rolling on through. We now see them moving uh, over hill, over dale. They've hit the dusty trail. And we can see them um, continuing on. It appears that they were talking for a minute. Now we see they're back in the armored car. Taking a little uh, road trip through Russia. Man, why does this look like the woods of Alabama like walking through this segment? Man, because it'd just be that bad. <laughs> it'd be that bad. That really does Real look tight. like the hills of Alabama. I'm not going to lie. Looks like uh, Fort Toulouse or uh, Oak Mountain State Park or uh, Cheehaw State Park. It looks like really any state park in Alabama. I see, see Antonio said it looked like a Max Pro, that truck. I'm not sure if it is a Max Pro. I was about to say it looks like an American-made goat armored vehicle, but I'm not really sure if that's it, but it looks very familiar. <laughs> that's it. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing some comments in the chat, Matthew. Uh, but still, another interesting thing that I'd like to point out here, y'all, and this is something, Matthew, that literally popped up right when you were talking. I was like, ooh, ooh. There's a large amount of armor that's available for the Free Russian Army in this front. That is a... These are actually really high class. That is a T-64BV accompanied by a second T-64BV. That is Dang, some... That that's is a lot. Some, no, it's not just a lot. That's really high class armor for uh, Soviet-era technology. T-64s are considered some of the best main battle tanks that were produced by the Soviet Union and were so expensive and so mechanically complex that they were actually greatly limited in production numbers. And they've got these, so they pretty much have some of the best tanks that could be provided to them by the Ukrainians. So pretty impressive stuff right there. And once again, I have to say that this video came out today. It was filmed today, from what we understand as well. And it's showing that clearly the Free Russian Army has not been taking the unbelievable losses that pro-Russians would tell you. And also their headquarters, supposedly that the Russians say they had, that was filled with hundreds of thousands of uh, NATO commanders. They all got killed in a single Iskander strike. is apparently untrue. Man, I wish they would give us a side view. Okay, there we go. 
Man, I I like could swear this looks like one of those goat armored vehicles that they sell to the uh, like domestic audience here in America. They're they're first sell to civilians. It looks just like it. Let's see here. You know, Matthew, you're. I dead saw on the a nail. review on one yesterday. I, I'm not gonna lie. I think you actually got this dead on the nail, Matthew. Because let's take a look at this and let's see if it is a match. I'm going to bring it on screen in a second when I can get a good picture of it. And here we go. I think this is the best I can get. So, this is the vehicle. Yep. That's yep. it. That's yep. it. Panels and everything it's in match. green, though. Yeah, so, but the panels and everything on the side match because it has those same little protruding panels here near the rear. So, this is a goat armored car, which is really nice. And basically, looking. that thing is basically a Ford F550. That's been basically the, the shell of the truck's been taken off, and they've put this armored shell on top of it instead to, to replace the uh, top part of the truck. Uh, and it's almost similar to what I could tell to a Kirby. Or not a Kirby, but what did that Canadian vehicle is that they sent over in mass to Ukraine? The Senator? It's very similar. Yeah, the Senator. It's like the same Ford chassis, uh, but a different shell on it. And I got to say this, once again, interesting, because while we believed that the Free Russian Army was entirely comprised of nothing but older Soviet equipment, now we are starting to see that not only are there small arms, primarily Western provided, but also some of their armored cars like this one here are also Western provided as well. But we can see them showing... They probably the called the guys up and probably bought it from them, really. Because I don't think you can get those on a used market, or at least to my knowledge. I see them kind of staging right there, and now they're back on the road again. And I mean, it's a bumpy road. They're getting, they're getting thrown around in there. Oh, my Lord. Once again, Russian paving is not the best. Unlike this armored car, which is probably one of the best. We the best. But beyond that, we see them continuing to roll down the road. You know, funnily enough, these things cost, I think, about $500,000. Not cheap. <laughs> That's not no, cheap. No, not cheap at all. I don't know what civilian in America is buying these either because I don't know who's buying a $500,000, half a million dollar armored truck. And we see them continuing to go down the road. The camera's pretty blurry inside the armored car. And you can also see these portholes on the side as well. Those are actually... Uh, of a feature, a special feature that allows you to open them and then fire your rifle out of the porthole, which is really neat. It's actually pretty common, actually, too. And we can see them still rolling. I mean, they are traveling a very long distance inside of this MRAP. Well, not MRAP, an armored car for the most that part. Goat. Man, that goat, it's the goat. It's the goat. Man, Caterall would be wanting to have one of these trucks a little too bad. Man, I'll tell you what, I want one of these. <laughs> <It's such a laughs> to have that goat. And now we can see them loading out. Ooh, some 50 caliber armor piercing rounds because they're the black tip rounds. Really nice. See them loading them up. And the machine guns are ready to roll. We now see them firing the machine gun into the distance in support of the infantry. We see them rolling by. Now, that is a Max Pro. That, there's no question about that. That is a big, giant, fat Max Pro right there. And they just rolled by it. And now we see them continuing to fire the 50 cal. There goes the T-64 BV. Oh, my Lord. They almost died. <laughs> they keep on driving. We see them continuing to fire the 50 cal. And now we can see they're back to being on the road. And we see them continuing to keep rolling. And now we can see them finally dismounting the armored vehicle. Is there no sound in the video? 
Uh, there is sound, but I have it muted. Oh. Because oh. of that reason. <laughs> That's an American music song. Who is the player of the American man? <laughs> but anyways, we're going to be muting that. We can see the, uh, the goat out there going ham. It is the goat. It is the greatest of all time. See them moving around the abandoned building. We don't know exactly where this is on the Shebekino front, and we're not going to geolocate it either for OPSEC reasons. Uh, but we can see them here, staging around the building. We see that guy has a CZ Bren 2. And we can see them uh, apparently dealing with some uh, wounded uh, Free Russian Army soldiers. We now see them loading them up onto stretchers and getting them out of the area. Gotta say, it seems like a Ford seems to be the truck of choice uh, for this Freedom of Russia Legion. It's kind of weird. They like American vehicles and equipment. They really hmm. do. You know, everyone loves American equipment, Matthew. Everyone in the world loves American equipment. Good. It's better when it's free. I'm, I'm telling you what, it really is. And that's the end of that clip. But nice to see that they were able to show us a good bit of what's going on in that area. And we can once again see that this was filmed by the Romanian battle group. That name. Um, <laughs> because I cannot read the name or pronounce it. But still, very nice to see. And hopefully, they keep up the good work. Because it looks like they were really covering a lot of territory in that clip. But moving on from that, we were able to hear of continued explosions coming from the city of Belgrade today. Here's that clip. Actually, I'm sorry, it wasn't the continued sounds of explosions. It was the actual 122mm grad rocket, as seen in the frame right there, impacting a parking lot and detonating inside the city. Here's the clip. Ooh. Oh, my oh dear. Good heavens. Good googly moogly. <laughs> but still, it, I don't know what that beep is at the start. It sounds like the beginning of a pistol drill. Listen to that, Matthew. Do you hear that? That was somebody's uh, iPhone, probably. They sent the detonation text. <laughs> but beyond that, it is showing that Belgrade is still under fire and that the Free Russian Army is still bombarding or attempting to bombard Russian forces that are inside of Belgrade. At the moment, it appears that the Free Russian Army is not going to be pushed out of Belgrade quite easily. As a matter of fact, even with the reinforcement of uh, the Russian border guard forces with larger contingents of the Russian Army, it still appears that both, uh, both groups are taking high amounts of losses when trying to deal with the Free Russian Army and that they're not going to be pushing them out of the Belgrade Oblast for quite some time. Not only that, but with the provision of armor support, it also seems as though the Free Russian Army has the firepower to really deal with anything that Russia tries to throw its way way on the ground and they don't really have to deal with the problems of the air power that the russian could bring the russians could bring against them and that largely seems to be the case because of something that i mentioned on my uh patreon but i'll explain it here a little bit because i went into a very in-depth analysis on patreon but the short answer is is that there is probably ukrainian air defenses on the other side of the border near to the Kharkiv region um, that are pretty much providing an umbrella over the Free Russian Army, where the Russian Air Force is scared to operate because if they fly that close to the Ukrainian borders, they're most likely going to get shot down by some kind of Ukrainian air defense, like the roaming Patriot system, which now may not be roaming and may just be sitting behind the Free Russian Army and waiting for the Russian Air Force to be baited into operations against the Free Russians and then fire on them and shoot down the aircraft. And speaking of aircraft being shot down or damaged, it appears that there was a large attack that occurred on the Ingalls Air Base today and may have ended up producing some very serious damage. Usually it takes 36 to 48 hours for us to be able to get enough information to be able to confirm what kind of damage was caused at, uh, at an airbase inside of Russia, but usually we do get that information over time. We were able to confirm that a drone attack by the Ukrainian Armed Forces did occur on the Ingalls Air Force Base, an air base that is used to house and operate the strategic bomber fleet or a part of the strategic bomber fleet of the Russian Federation, housing both TU-95s, TU-160s, and the MiG-31K on occasion, this base really is the go-to target for the Ukrainians when trying to deal with Russian threats of missile attacks that are traveling into Ukraine. 
we can actually see one of the TU-95s in a slightly worse shape sitting on a tarmac that appears to be missing two engines on its left side, but still having the other two. Doesn't look like this one's in that great a shape. We can also see this TU-160 down here that's just sitting on the runway as well. Uh, it doesn't seem like anything's wrong with it, but still kind of weird to see that they just have a TU-95 in worser shape just sitting on the tarmac in the satellite picture. But nevertheless, they house a large amount of bombers here. We can also see that they've chomp chomped a couple of them um, because, of course, the Russians are running low on parts. I don't think I even have to tell you all that much about that little issue. And we can also see one MiG-31K right there uh, being serviced by a Euro 4320 fuel truck, showing that they apparently were getting this one ready to operate at the time that the satellite picture was taken. Moving on from just the general overview of where Ingalls Air Base is, we have to show y'all the attacks that occurred and also a little bit more information about what was there during the attack. From what could be seen on satellite pictures, there were six TU-95s and three TU-160s that were sitting on the tarmac at Ingalls Air Base before the attack. This is some very important news, especially going on in the future, as it gives us the idea that there is a potential for six TU-95s or three TU-160s to have been completely damaged or destroyed in the course of this attack that happened today. And now, here is the footage showing, or at least letting us hear, some of the sounds of the powerful explosions that were occurring from the direction of Ingalls Air Base, and also the sound of the Ukrainian drones flying on into their targets. When you see Dima here, absolutely shocked that the air raid sirens are going off. And hearing the sound of a drone, he is quite perplexed, because he was told Russia's winning the war. Dima puts down his stack of ice and vodka and shuts the door. He then listens to the sporadic sound of AK fire, which really draws his interest because the Russians are always attracted to violence. He then goes out into the street to look off into the distance and try and see what's going on. The first explosion hits, and I'm guessing that Dima's deaf, because he didn't even, like, jump at all from the sound of this explosion <laughs> that was strong enough to set off car alarms. Notice this man's steel reaction to the explosion. Not a single muscle twitched in this man's body. He is either drunk or does not give a damn. Man, this guy is built different. He literally heard gunfire and explosions. He walked out toward it and just stood there. It's like, what's up with this guy? We now hear the SCP containment breach alarms going off, and this still does not face Dima, who is going to continue to look towards the direction of Ingles and try and see what's going on. We can now oh, hear- he's not, he's not, he, he doesn't even have a camera. He doesn't have the cameraman hack. Man, he's just, uh, he's just living in the moment. He's just like, what's going on, Blit? We can hear more anti-aircraft fire. And we see that this is actually boring him, so he's just starting to look around the neighborhood as a whole, trying to see what's going on elsewhere. This dude's either, like, really stone-cold drunk, or he's a loony, one of the other dudes. He's like, his reactions are not normal. And, uh, we can see right here, he's just still chilling. Not a single muscle twitched in his damn body, even the second time. He even watched the explosion that time. I don't know if you saw it, Matthew. But right out there in the distance, there's going to be a flash right where the mouse cursor's at. Wait, hang on. I think I had to go back earlier. It should be, like, right out here somewhere. Right there. There it was. There was the explosion at Ingles. The shockwave's coming. It hits. Not a single muscle twitched in that man's body. He looks around a little more. This dude's probably strapped. Like, uh, whatever he's wearing, like, uh, on his, uh, shoulder. He's probably got, like, a gun or something on him. Because he's acting too calm. Man, this guy is the kind of guy to look at an explosion and just go, <laughs> you know, just some stupid shit like that. Like, this, this guy's got no reactions at all. Seems a little inhuman. But beyond that, he was able to witness the explosions at Ingalls Air Base, not that far away. We also got to see some more videos that came out of the explosion right here. We got more. These are largely documenting the same explosions we heard in the first clip, but are from different angles and different security cameras in the area. 
right now, as these car alarms are going off, somewhere in the distance, Dima is watching the explosions completely unfazed. He, in fact, finds them boring. Did I hear it correct? It sounded like the sirens came on right at the uh, explosion point. Pretty much, yeah. They the explosion hit, and then the and then the rush just went. Blit! Sound the alarm! Air attack! <laughs> <laughs> A little late then. Now the alarms go off. The Russians can't afford having an actual car alarm put on, so it only goes off for twenty seconds and then stops. It's like the demo version of the car alarm. Oh, we hear someone revving up. Apparently, they're leaving. <laughs> they're like, this is too much for me. <laughs> Meanwhile, Dima. Oh, there they go. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're leaving. leaving. They are taking off. That's definitely not Dima, though. <laughs> Dima ain't leaving hell or high water. He's staying. Man, Dima is a stone-cold killer. <laughs> He's going to watch the explosions. <laughs> Here's the next clip. You hear the sound of the drone. The long crews are out early today. Oh, there's the first explosion again. Sounds like the fries are ready at McDonald's as well. And someone got on the slide whistle right there and then the clip ends. Moving on from that and into our last clip, this is the last bit of film we have of the Ingalls airbase attack. The microphone on this camera needs some work. You know, the truth is, when the Russians hear these, like, lawnmower-style drones come flying in like that, they know it's not a lawn crew because nobody does the lawn in Russia. Like, there are no lawn crews. Yeah. <laughs> and also, on top of that, man, they're like, who's mowing? It's the middle of winter. <laughs> it's, 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 it's in the middle of winter in Russia still. What the hell? And then they look out the window and they're like, oh, bleh. Just they watch, like, a TU-95 get lit up. But that's the end of those clips. And once again, confirming that there was an attack, but we still have not gotten any pictures from the airbase showing the severity of the attack and the damage caused. Hopefully we'll get some kind of satellite picture evidence or uh, picture evidence from the ground showing the actual damage that was caused to the airbase. Because right now it's a bit of a, of a toss up. We don't know if any serious damage was caused or if there was nothing but serious damage. We have no idea. But an attack did occur and it does seem that it was entirely successful. We heard very limited amounts of anti-aircraft fire also showing that the drones came in with minimal to no resistance and once again proving another successful attack by the ukrainian armed forces moving on from that and up into moscow another apartment building caught on fire to again this time on the southwestern side of moscow and it went up in flames like the one that was on the northern side of moscow here's the clip showing the thing turning into krakatoa good googly moogly that thing is burning That's the end of that clip, but just wanting to show you all a little fire and fury, the likes of which has never been seen before, happening on those Russians that decide to get become tenants of a brand new apartment building. Appears to have been a rather unfun time for everyone involved, probably the contractors and whoever the hell is living there. But moving on from that little bit of news, and way out of Moscow, and way down south, and into the area of the Black Sea. We were able to see today that apparently the Russians are starting to be quite scared of the port of Novorossiysk, Many of y'all know that the port of Novorossiysk is the Russian fallback base after Crimea uh, in the port of Sevastopol came under a heavy attack by Ukrainian fire and the Russian Black Sea Fleet started to lose ships left and right. A lot of the actual combat vessels of the Black Sea Fleet have been moved from Sevastopol and have been moved all the way over to Novorossiysk, a smaller port, but still, now that there's so little of the Black Sea Fleet left, most of the fleet is actually able to weigh anchor inside of Novorossiysk and stay within this port. However, it seems even here, they are quite concerned about Ukrainian attacks occurring on the port and causing uh, considerable losses to the Russian Navy. Specifically, 
to these Kilo class submarines, which are very expensive and very valu valuable to the Russian Navy. They have started to make decoy submarines that they're going to float in the water like decoy ducks and try and make it seem like there's more submarines there or there are uh, some submarines that are out at sea, but they still look like they're in port. We can see the decoy submarine here. It looks like they're trying to paint them up on some kind of a large board and then give them a conning tower of similar size and then plop them in the water and just kind of float them around the port and, and moor them or anchor them wherever they need to so that way it'll look like there are still Kilo class submarines in the port. However, it's a bad idea because you can, like the aircraft, you can easily tell that this thing is a decoy. Even when it gets put in the water, it will clearly look like a decoy and it's not going to be distracting or uh, really dissuading the Ukrainians from actually attacking the real submarines that are found throughout the port of Novorossiysk. We also got to see that the UK government or the British Ministry of Defense, made this special little picture here that just says, Russian forces deception efforts at Novorossiysk port, just to get it across to you all where it is and what they're doing. Uh, and it appears that it's not uh, a good deception effort because I don't think anyone has been deceived. It looks stupid. Uh, but with that, we're now going to be moving on from this little bit of news here in the port of Novorossiysk because it seems as though the Russians are uh, greatly afeared. Uh, apparently, the Irish uh, are, are pissed off tonight. I have no idea why. But nevertheless, the Russians are greatly afeared, and it appears that they're traveling a little bit further on south uh, to try and get away from all of the trouble uh, posed up in the north. Uh, they call that the troubles. Uh, but beyond that, too, they're starting to build a brand new port inside of Georgia, and I'm going to have to try and get the town name correct again, but it's pretty much on the very edge of West Abkhazia, and the town is called Ochumchiri, uh, and right up here at this little weird-looking place that you can see, this is where the Russians plan on building a brand new uh, port for the Black Sea Fleet. It is far, as far away from Ukraine as it physically can be, literally. It cannot get any farther than this because just south of Ochimchiri is the border of West Abkhazia in Georgia. And this is pretty much the end of where the Russians can build a port. And even then, it's being built in a legally occupied territory as West Abkhazia is an unrecognized state internationally. And the only people who recognize West Abkhazia are the Russians and a few other countries like Cuba. This is something that is very interesting because we got a lot of footage today from this naval base and we can see that there's active efforts in the area to try and build this up to be usable for the Black Sea Fleet at large or at least what's left of it. We see the naval facility right down there. As we can see, Russian trucks are slowly moving around, building the construction, uh, the new constructions uh, in the area, trying to expand the base. Well, we now see the drone getting some view of the seaside as the engine continues to whir. And with that, that's the end of the clip. But still showing us uh, a decent bit of proof that the Russians are building a new base. Uh, and so, with and that... And also, also, real quick, Enforcer, uh, just to let you know, Ukraine is currently under a major uh, missile attack right now. Every single region in Ukraine is under a red alert. Uh, and people want to know if you can go check out Twitter real quick. I've retweeted a lot of news about it to basically, as the minutes are going by, the attack is occurring. If you want to cover it real quick. Uh, yes, we can try. Uh, I did know that there was an air attack happening before the stream because we heard of a heavy amount of Russian bomber activity south of Ostrakhan, which showed that they were going to be conducting a missile attack. But it now appears that that is well underway. And according to the reports that we were able to find on Twitter, and if you'd like to follow this news live as the stream's going on, because we might not be able to cover it here all too well, because we still have a lot of news to cover you can always go in the link in the description below click on that it takes you straight to the twitter and you can go over here and check out all of our news uh but it appears that there are missiles on the way in pretty much every single region we don't have any video or picture evidence of this at the moment and largely 
there's not really a lot for me to add because missile attacks are missile attacks. Missiles fly from point A to point B uh, and either hit their target or they're shot down. But there is a large air attack going on in Ukraine at the moment, but there's not really much more for me to add here on air. With that, we're now going to be moving on out of West Ostrakhan inside of Georgia, or the illegally unrecognized state of West Ostrakhan inside of Georgia. And we're now going to be moving on into the area of Odessa, speaking about naval news a little bit more. As we got to see a very neat British ASRAM system, uh, or advanced short-range air-to-air missile system, uh, hitting a Russian drone near to the area of Odessa. And let's see, is there any audio? There we go. Uh, the, the missile launched so quick, it was on frame for a good while before we even heard the audio. But here's the clip. And there it goes. Hitting the drone and destroying it immediately. And here's the clip from the actual gunner site showing the impact and destruction of the drone. But that's the end of that clip, and great to see that British uh, so, uh, short-range air-to-air, well, service-to-air systems are still working incredibly well to defend the skies of Ukraine and help to save lives. With that, we have to talk about something that has been going on a little bit uh, as a larger thing in the background. Many of y'all know that the Russians have a security organization called the CSTO, uh, which is some kind of a NATO... Uh, counter, I guess, is the best way to call it. Uh, and it consists of these countries. The country of the Russian Federation. Uh, it also includes Armenia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan. Oh, no, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan, if I'm correct. And let me go make sure I got that correct. So, yeah, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. So, those are the correct countries. Those are the countries that are included in the CSTO, or the Collective Security Treaty Organization. Uh, it appears that Russia is also trying to branch out even farther than the CSTO and try and gain more allies to be able to stand up against the Western world, or really just be a coalition of anti-Western countries. And a lot of people have been talking about this today and what it means or what it's going to end up producing and people have been all across the board. Some people are saying that it's in preparation of some kind of a massive world war. Maybe it's just to try and get new weapons. Or maybe they're trying to form just a, uh, a counter to NATO in the large part, one way or the other. But so many people have had opinions on this. And this is something that's really in Matthew's wheelhouse. Something that he has talked about today before the stream even went live. And Matthew, what do you think about it? All right, so the poll question says, the ISW says Russia is building a major coalition of anti-Western nations, and the question to the audience is, what do you believe is the main reason? And at 47%, the most popular option is uh, that Russia is preparing for World War III. 22% uh, said to procure new weapons, 20% said to form a new NATO, uh, and 10% were unsure. So on this one, I got to say, it looks to me like Russia is trying to split off the uh, anti-Western nations into its own hemisphere of the world, uh, in my opinion, to prepare for a broader scale war, which may or may not be world war, but it would be a wider scale one, maybe in Europe or that region of the world uh, at all. So I would say personally to me that it looks like they're doing that. Of course, they want new weapons. Uh, but I think mainly and primarily, they're looking for a defensive alliance to get ready to potentially uh, attack the West. Um, but that's my opinion. But Enforcer, what say you? I would have to say that in my opinion, in my honest opinion, they're probably trying to procure new weapons. Usually things are a lot more mundane than, um, than it seems. And so I'd have to go with a more mundane option. That they're probably just trying to procure new weapons and try and make it seem like there's a bigger benefit for these countries that will give them weapons. Although in reality, there really is no benefit to being a friend of Russia's, either militarily or economically. Uh, and so I hope I was able to address that fairly well, at least in my opinion. But before I move on into the, uh, more of the news tonight... I have to say something that uh, we are, we're trying to say for a little bit later in stream, and right now is the perfect time to tell you all about it, because it's something that has blown us away, and we don't even really know how to tell this to you all, uh, but because it's such great news, but at the same time, it's also very uh, concerning news. So, as you all may know, the official Enforcer store um, uh, right here that has been selling the LSA's flags has been up for about a few days now. Uh, and over the course of those few days, we have ended up selling more flags than we ever imagined we would sell. Even at the highest number, it's way more than we thought it would be. And so we actually sold out last night. Like after the stream ended, we sold out of flags because there was a maximum cap that we had for the pre-order and it, it, it was reached. Uh, and so 
Matthew and me had to have an emergency meeting last night in the middle of the night at like three in the morning uh, and figure out what we were going to do. And so we have decided that we are going to do this as a compromise because we cannot allow this pre-order to run all the way until LSA day anymore. Because if it does, we are going to have so many orders that we are physically not going to be able to fulfill all of them. So here's what we're going to do instead. Tonight is actually the last night um, that this LSA flag limited edition run will be running. Um, I get to thank everyone who's gotten one so far. There is endless, uh, endless amounts of y'all who have way more than we actually thought we get the flag. And I got to thank y'all for that because it is unbelievable that so many people love the Lee Spring Army and love the channel so much that they want this flag and in that in that amount. Um, but of course, we are going to have to end this tonight. So at midnight local time tonight, which means that this is going to end in about three more hours, the limited edition run for this flag is going to close. We have absolutely no limit put on right now because this was kind of a part of the compromise. If you want one of these flags, if you want it, you can get it tonight. You can order it and you can get it. You can get one of them or you can get two of them um, because two is the cap per customer. But we cannot run this thing all the way until LSA day on Saturday because we are physically not going to be able to fill out all the orders if we let this thing run that long. Um, so That is true. And also remember, folks, that if you pre-order a flag, 10% of the profits goes to United24 to help save lives in Ukraine. I did see some folks yesterday, they actually didn't scroll all the way down the main page to see that segment about the fundraising, uh, but it is true. 10% is going to go to United24 of the profits. So it is helping out Ukraine in the meantime as well. And of course, we will post the receipt to that when we finish the pre-orders uh, and we ship out all the flags. We'll show the donation uh, probably in a community post. Uh, it's probably where we'll put it. And also on Twitter as well. Uh, but I'm very proud of that aspect of it. And I got to say, everyone, I, and I can't say this enough, it is insane that we are having to end a limited edition run early, not because no one wanted to get it, but because so many people wanted to get it that we literally cannot get a flag to everyone who would probably want it. That's why we're kind of just, uh, it, well, that, that's why we're not just kind of, we are, we are actually having to end this thing tonight in three hours because if we let this thing run, we're just not going to be able to fill out all the orders. There would probably be... At that, like, I can't even imagine how many of them there would be because over just 40, well, about 72 hours at this point, there is more than we physically ever thought we would we would have to get for flags. So for tonight, there is no limit. Uh, we have no limit on the amount of orders that can be put in. But once three hours is over here, because it's 10 o'clock now local time, and this is going to end at midnight. Well, actually, that's going to end in two hours, not actually, not three. In two hours' time, this is going to close, and we will not be taking any more orders for this flag. I hate to say that, because I wish we could run this all the way up till LSA Day, but I want to make sure that we are able to ensure the quality to all of y'all that we promised, and not only that, uh, be able to physically do it, uh, because it's it's absolutely insane. I got to thank everyone in the Lee Spring Army for being massive followers of what we do, the way we run the news, uh, our kind of ethics and ethos, and not only that, what the Lee Spring Army stands for, which is all the exact same things. And I thank y'all for appreciating that so much that every single one of y'all would want an LSA flag, and all of y'all got an LSA flag for the most, well, way more than everyone got an LSA flag. More people than I ever imagined got one of these things. I got to thank all of y'all so much once again. And I got to say that this was a massive success. Of course, I also have to point out that 10% of all profits made on this limited edition run will be donated to United24, uh, which is the government-run Ukrainian nonprofit that has been helping out ever since the beginning of the war when it was founded by a special presidential order of Zelensky. Uh, we'll be donating 10% of the profits to United24 to help out in saving lives in Ukraine. Not that this has anything to do with Ukraine. It's more of an LSA thing, which the LSA uh, doesn't just strictly pertain to the Ukraine war. It really pertains to anything around the world that we consider the side of good here on this channel. Uh, but nevertheless, we do want to make sure to help out the Ukrainians because they are the people we talk about the most and they require a decent amount of help as much as we can possibly give them. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does address that well. If y'all are wondering where y'all can get to this website, if you're still wanting one of these flags, you can click on the link in the description below. And I believe we also have like the Shopify directly connected to the channel now. So you can also click on that and go straight to the website uh, and pre-order a flag there if you've not been able to. I also have to say, I'm so sorry to so many people who in the live chat are saying right now, dang, I can't get one. I hate that so much. We will be putting the LSA flag out back again in the future. It's just that none of them will be autographed. It will just be the LSA 
will say flag in its raw form, just the flag itself. Uh, but we don't know when we're going to be doing that. We don't know if we're going to make this an annual limited edition re release on LSA week annually, or if we're going to do this every six months or every three months. We don't really know how we're going to work that out, but still... Thank you to everyone once again who has been a part of this incredible uh, limited edition run on the merchandise store, the first one we ever did, and I can't wait to be able to do many more with y'all in the future, and hopefully y'all will be very surprised with what we have in store, because we have some very cool stuff that is coming along with the flag. I'm not going to tell y'all because we never even told y'all that this stuff was going to be included, uh, but we actually are going to be packing in a little extra goodie that we just decided to do because we wanted to thank each of y'all for getting one of these flags, and I hope y'all really like it, and I, I can't wait to Indeed. see y'all's reaction. Um, but with that... Yes, I can't wait to see it as well, because we just decided to add it today, and we're like, you know, we got to add something extra to make this even more special, and we did. Uh, so I think y'all will be very happy with it. But also, to answer a quick question, someone said, are y'all always going to do the 10% to 9 to 24 on the merch store and yes we will uh, every single merch drop that we have will always donate the 10% to a Ukrainian charity of some sort it may be United 24 we may rotate and maybe go to Razom or revive soldiers of Ukraine but there will always be a 10% of profits uh, going to a Ukrainian charity of no matter what we put on the store it'll always be like that we did that with um, I believe the first product we had on Teespring uh, and then we found out Teespring margins are super thin, so we had to sort of do away with that. But now that we're running our own store again, we have enough margin here to actually put some money toward charity. So we're back to it once again, and I'm very glad about that because I felt bad about taking it off last time. But we were barely breaking even on the Teespring stuff, <laughs> so we had to. But this time, we don't have to, so I'm very thankful. And I hope that does address that question fairly well, and also... I just, I just got to say, we are completely grateful and thankful for such an amazing community who supports this channel through and through. And I cannot wait for these flags to go out here in the future and see them flying over every corner of the world. We actually have a plan. It's kind of in the works. We're going to have to see how it goes. We may actually make a special video of LSA flags flying around the world in different places and also uh, different people in their own home countries speaking in their own languages saying I am I am LSA in many many different languages you know we're, we're speaking about Ukrainian English uh, German French wherever at least Spring Army viewer may be we would like to have a montage of people saying I am LSA in their own indigenous language and also the LSA flag flying in every single country where that statement is made. That would be very cool to see. It's a project that we would hope to work on. And it was something I told Matthew in secret last night. I was like, what if we did that? And I think I'm going to tell y'all that so that way maybe we could get the entire community working on that idea uh, and have all of y'all kind of brainstorming on how we might be able to make that possible because that would be really cool to see. But with that, I hope that does address that quite well. And before we move on into the rest of the news tonight, because we have a lot of Ukraine war frontline news from the actual war in Ukraine, I want to make sure that we're able to address some questions in the chat uh, because some of y'all have thrown in some really interesting questions. Uh, and so with that, what do we got, Matthew? All right, and first up, we have a question from Griffin Provenzano, and I got your last name right this time. I tell you what, Griffin, thank you very much for that support. You threw in a $100 donation, the hey! largest super chat of the night, and it does mean a lot, Griffin, and thank you very much for helping to keep the channel running. He says, LSA, he says, I love the flag, and I love what you do, and you will and become the only news I will listen to. So this is the Media Fund. And I got to thank you so much for the incredibly kind words, Griffin Provenzano. And I got to thank you for the incredible support as well. You've helped out this channel massively. And I hope, Griffin, that you are going to get one of those flags and that it will arrive on your doorstep here, hopefully within the next few weeks. Uh, and you'll be able to fly the flag of the Lee Spring Army over your corner of the world. That is going to be incredibly cool. Uh, and also, thank you so much once again for saying that this may end up being the only news channel that you listen to. Because I try my best to verify the news that we have and to get it out there as factually as possible. We actually do such a good job delivering news these days uh, that we are starting to spread at an unbelievable speed. Uh, once again today, um, but so far before the stream even ran, we had gotten another whopping 1,000 subscribers before the stream even went live just from today. Uh, now we're up to about 1.2 thousand subscribers over the course of this entire day. And I've got to thank you all, all once again for being here with us, sticking with us, and for all of the new people joining in. It's, uh, it's an incredible thing. I've got to thank all of you all so much. And thank you so much, Griffin Provenzano, for being one of those folks that 
just loves the channel so much. I thank you so much for loving the design of the flag. Taurus Lore came up with an incredible one. It is the best of the best, uh, one of the best looking flags out there. And I'm sure as the years start to pass and as this channel grows and grows, not only to be a news organization, but also a community that is a force of good in this world, the flag of the Lee Spring Army will be known from every corner of the globe as a flag to be, um, to be looked at and the people who wave those flags to be respected as they're going to be an incredible group of people that help out around the entirety of the world to do the right thing. Uh, and I got to thank you so much once again for support, Griffin, the massive amount of support and making this all possible. And so with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one is going to Aaron, who's a longtime channel viewer as well. He puts in a 20 and says, thank you for the content. And thank you so much for the support. And thank you for enjoying the content. Aaron, you've been here forever, uh, and that's your third Super Chat to the channel, but you have been here for a very long time, and I gotta thank you so much for enjoying the content that we make. I try my best. Matthew tries his best to make the content as best as possible. Today was my day to make the Shore War video. Tomorrow will be Matthew's day, uh, and also I hope that people finally clear that up, because people will go on the Matthew's video, and they'll be like, thank you, Enforcer, great video, and then they'll go on my video, they'll be like, thank you, Enforcer, Matt, great video. I'm the Enforcer, and uh, Matthew is Enforcer, Matt. We're different people, uh, but I still really appreciate all the kind words that everyone's been throwing in, both to Matthew and me, regardless of... Uh, whether, uh, you know, you're saying it to me uh, and you mean it to Matthew or you're saying it to Matthew and you mean it to me, it means a lot to us that people enjoy this channel enough that y'all keep on saying incredibly kind kind things about how we run this channel uh, and also wanting us to keep it going. And also Aaron supporting it to help it to be possible. All of this means so much to us. And I got to thank you once again for being an old guard of the channel and being with the LSA for quite some time. And so with that, long live the Lee Spring Army. And we are on to the last question of this segment. And then we're going to be moving back into the war news. All right. And up next, we have a $20 super chat from Stu and last name Bedasso. And you didn't get Yay! me. Nice try. But you didn't get me. <laughs> and thank you very much for that support. And there was no comment here to address. Um, but they were hoping to get me, but they didn't do it. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. I saw it. But Enforcer, what say you? Man, you would have to be a stupid asshole <laughs> to, to read that all. <laughs> I, I, I had to do it for you, uh, Stu. I knew you wanted us to do it. So yeah, I'm just going to deliberately let you have me. But beyond that... Thank you so much for the first support to this channel ever. Uh, it means a lot to us, and i got to thank you for appreciating the channel enough that you would want to help us to keep this thing running. Thank you so much once again. I hope you got a laugh out of me saying that. Uh, and once again, thank you so much for being a part of this channel, and I hope that you're here to stay. Uh, and also, I'm, I'm guessing that you might be fairly new to the channel. I haven't really seen your name in the live chat often um from what i remember um but beyond that if you're brand new welcome in and we are happy to have you here and we hope that you're here to stay with everyone else it's an amazing community of people in the live chat i'm sure you'll have no problem making loads of friends uh if you haven't been here for a while if you have been here for a while i'm sorry i just haven't seen you much uh but beyond that thank you so much once again i hope that does address that well and welcome to the lee spring army and as they say the Lee Spring Army will never die. Put an LSA in the chat if you agree. But it's time for us to move on from that question segment and on into the location unknowns that we have from inside of Ukraine today. Starting off with some new Polish volunteers that have just gotten hot and ready like a little Caesar's pizza and are ready to go to the front lines. Check them out. What a group of guys. One of the, uh, A couple of them had their faces blurred out, but beyond that, we can see it's your normal group of Ukrainian frontline soldiers for the most part. Of course, these coming from Poland, and wonderful to see that the Polish and the Ukrainians stand side by side as far as Eastern European security is concerned, and that many Poles take the brave step forward to defend the nation of Ukraine and their nation in turn. Moving on from that little bit of news and that neat little picture, it's time for us to move on into our next little clip, which we actually got from United24, where they went into great depth to talking about how Ukraine has become really the first cyber war in history, which is actually a fairly true statement. But without further ado, let me make sure to get this video for y'all and let y'all enjoy this incredible mini documentary made by United24. Here's the clip. How did Ukrainians destroy the Russian equivalent of YouTube? Why do they compare that to Stuxnet, the first known destructive cyber attack in the world? And what do Ukrainian hackers need machine guns for? This is the continuation of the video about the first cyber war. After repelling the most powerful cyber attacks in Russia, Ukrainians launched a counteroffensive. But who are these Ukrainian cybersecurity experts? 
today our security service of Ukraine, SBU hackers, are not just a hacker, it's a mixture of a hacker and of a SWAT team officers because we have a lot of people working on the front line because there we can have access to their devices. There we work uh, against their radio electronic warfare. There we work against their UAVs. So, and in order to conduct this operation, you need to be there, closer to the front lines. So you need to understand how to shoot. So not always this is somebody who sits in, the, in front of the keyboard. So sometimes you need to work in the field as well today. According to cyber specialists from the SBU, they can't talk about most of their operations until Ukrainian victory. However, there have been high-profile operations that couldn't go unnoticed, and some media attribute it to the SBU. In Russia, there have been discussions about blocking YouTube, similar to what they've already done with Facebook and Instagram. They are preparing the video hosting platform RuTube as an alternative. However, this idea also Rootube. caught the interest of Ukrainians. <laughs> SBU officials can neither confirm nor deny its involvement. But exclusively for United24 Media, Ilya provided his evaluation of what Ukrainian hackers did. Rutube was completely down on May 9th when Putin met the parrot on Red Square. So, and it, it should be broadcasted on Rutube, but, but it didn't. So our cyber forces destroyed all the logical connections between all the servers. And it took them for probably up to five days to actually switch it on and later months to restore everything. Even in the Russian government itself, this attack was compared to Stuxnet, the cyber operation against Iran's nuclear infrastructure. This special virus physically damaged 20% of all nuclear centrifuges in the Islamic Republic. In addition to Rutube, Ukrainians successfully attacked the satellite communication system. Man, that is the most off-brand stupid sounding name for a YouTube knockoff I've ever heard, Rutube. Like, yeah, I'm gonna go watch Rutube. <laughs> it's like, that it's sounds like, what stupid. What is this, like the... Was this like the YouTube for like uh, kangaroo puppies or something? This is the root tube right here. <laughs> and, uh, all the kangaroo videos you want. <laughs> kangaroos, kangaroos, and more kangaroos. <laughs> but it's like, that is dumb. And also, what the hell are the names of these companies? Dom are you. So you're getting dominated on are you. And then you got Miranda <laughs> Media. And then you got Dozer. Teleport. Dozer. Dozer. Kill Dozer. Dozer, Blyant. Shogo! Not in the Dozer Blitz! <laughs> but beyond that, we're gonna get back to the clip. Named Dozor Teleport, used by the Russian military. They also targeted Miranda Media Internet Provider, which operated in temporarily occupied Crimea, and Russia's second largest provider, Dom.ru. After some Ukrainian strikes, Russians needed paper. A lot of paper. Hacking into the Moscow Technical Inventory Bureau system gave Ukrainians access to data about all the real estate and its owners in the Russian capital. This bureau lost all its digital data online and was forced to revert to using paper for its operation. Right example was the attack. Dang, oh my lord, you know that had to have been mental. Someone probably that jumped sucked. out of a building, like on their own. <laughs> like, you know, KGB or FSB involvement just jumped out of the window when they got told, yeah, the whole database went down, so we're transferring everything over to paper and we can't even access it. And that would have been like, all right, time to go swan diving. <laughs> That's it, you know, like I'm just saying, I wouldn't have been around for that. I would have quit or, or something else. On their custom service. So the whole infrastructure of their customs was fully destroyed and backups uh, as well. And it led that all the the custom services from Vladivostok to occupied Sevastopol uh, stopped and they needed uh, for three days they used paper. Civilian hackers are not standing aside. And there were a number of people, literally a queue of people standing and calling to security service of Ukraine. Uh, what I call it cyber territorial defense. People somehow connected to IT were ready to do something and to stop this war. Stop Russian Warbot became another tool of cyber war. Anyone could use it to feed data about Russian maneuvers. Ultimately, the SPU received over 100,000 messages. This helped destroy several enemy generals and hundreds of armored vehicles. Other IT specialists, under the auspices of the Ministry of Digital Transformation, formed the IT Army, which at one point numbered 300,000 people and successfully engaged in DDoS attacks. Dang. 
The Evora became another chatbot where Ukrainians could report on the movement of occupiers, their military crimes, and collaborators. All the uh, representatives of probably of IT professions who could be involved to attacks, they were involved. However, Russians have also managed to mobilize a significant number of people. They tried to force all the ransomware groups that were operating from Russia to work against Ukraine. Other methods used by Russians are referred to as information psychological operations. Russia began to apply them massively during the physical invasion in February 2022. A massive psychological attacks just in the morning. Probably you remember all those fakes about that Kharkiv is already occupied, Sumy is already occupied, and other cities. So, hey, the... Matthew, you know, I, I feel, you know, like that guy is talking about how there's people just out there saying fake information. You know, it's kind of interesting. I was just thinking about that. I swear, Matthew, there are people out there who still do that to this day, like bots and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Shills, things yeah, like man. that. People spread misinformation all the time. It's like a common occurrence now, even in, you know, so-called pro-Ukraine areas sometimes. Yeah, even, even across YouTube, there are still people who are able to push misinformation and try and push it as real information. Um, some of these people are easy to spot. Um, you, you can always identify people who are pro-Russians or pushing pro-Russian content because they'll say things like the Russians are not doing bad or they'll say something like NATO commanders got killed by a single missile, like hundreds of them did by a single missile, like it's some kind of a North Korean style execution. You can always tell people like that out there in the world or you can tell because pro-Ukrainian, those supposed pro-Ukrainian communities have a lot of involvement with pro-Russian YouTubers. There is quite a lot of that going on if you look a little bit under the surface. Uh, but with that, we're going to let the video continue. The idea was to make us surrender and to make people panic and understand that they shouldn't try to resist. Efforts to exert such influence continue to this day. The Security Service of Ukraine, SBU, records more than 1,000 Russian disinformation campaigns. Bro, they got the Gangsta Bugs Bunny up on the wall. <laughs> they got it in the SBU. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they sure do. Man, that's the that's the uh, the Bugs Bunny that's on that grind set, you know what I mean? Like the, uh, uh, the Hustler Bugs Bunny. That's that one. Man, that's the one where they show it and it's like, it's like, like grabbing the cash like its life depends on it. And you got that Chad music in the background going... You know, that's that shit, you know, it's, 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 always, it's always that same video each time, but they got Chad Bugs Bunny in there. You know, they're winning. 1,000 Russian disinformation campaigns against Ukraine every month. Since the beginning of full scale invasion, we blocked uh, 76 uh, bot farms with a capacity of more than 3 million fake accounts. These were only bot farms operating here in Ukraine. And you understand that there are bot farms operating from Russia, from other countries that we don't have access to. Bribed opinion leaders, fake accounts on all possible social media platforms, and traitors. All of this still works for Russia. Ukrainians are training to resist, and they're dispelling the myth of the all-powerful Russian hackers. Ukraine was not the first country to face cyber attacks. But this was penetrating in order to get the intelligence, get the information, and later use it. So this was not about destroying the state. And this situation we have now, it's about trying to destroy our country. So totally different situation, and the, the massiveness of the attacks, the, those thousands that we as security service of Ukraine witnessed, it clearly depicts the, the situation. Ukrainians continue to defend their homeland even in cyberspace. You learn very fast when you are on the cutting edge. Man, those bot farms are the bane of my existence. Like every time Ukraine takes one of those out or takes out a whole like slew of those fake accounts, that makes like oh, my job so much easier because when they took them down before, they had eliminated like pretty much all the bot farms they could find that you know, Ukraine did. Uh, and then all of a sudden Russia rebuilt them and the bots reappeared in the chat like uh, maybe about a month ago or so. Um, and they've never left since. So Ukraine hopefully is cracking back down on that because they've really got a hold on the uh, the live chat and the internet once again. Yeah, hopefully so, because there's an unbelievable amount of bot accounts out there. We are constantly dealing with them here on this channel. Of course, this channel being one of the front lines where these bots arrive, we see a lot of them. And so we really get to see the 
uh, the activity of the bot farms in full form in actual practice here on the internet. But moving on from that and into our next clip, we also got to see that apparently the Russians are getting mercenaries from Ghana now. I have low hopes that these guys are going to survive even beyond this video because their trigger discipline as well as their ability to flag each other like with, with ease is unbelievable. So here's the clip. Here we got this man over here on the left side of the screen with his finger on the trigger and the barrel of the gun pointed straight at the guy on the right side's face. So we're already off to a very good start. This guy is also going to double tap him. So if this guy somehow misses, this guy is going to shoot him in the chin. <laughs> We see this guy over here just realized he has an AK and is now messing with it. He's now loading it. You notice that, folks. He just racked the AK, so he's loaded it at this point. Right there. And then he aims it straight oh. at the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> Man, these guys are quality fighters. Like They're getting the best of the best. Man, the best, Jerry, the best. Only the best. And also, I would love to note that he also somehow has crammed snow into the, into the freaking compensator on the front of the AK. So, depending on how much snow is in that compensator, he may actually end up blowing up the barrel because it's going to get overpressure because of the packed snow. Maybe. Oh, man. <laughs> I have low These guys, hopes. like, gun safety is, like, so indicative of how poorly trained they are. Like, that one guy on the on the left right there is absolutely getting flagged the entire time with that one dude with his finger on the trigger. That's crazy. <laughs> dude, and then this guy over here getting flagged, he was like, man, I feel like I'm getting flagged too much. And then he goes and flags the cameraman deliberately, just aims the gun straight in his face. It's like... This is high-quality comedy right here, folks. You, you haven't seen anything better than this. But moving on from that and into our next clip, we also got to see the Ukrainians firing on Russian forces yeah. with their MI-24s. And that's what I say when um, when Matthew says, Are you hungry and want to go eat? I go, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but here's the clip. Yeah. And then we're going to be uh, muting that. But here comes the MI-24s tilting up and firing off their rockets right there. Look at that beautiful stuff. And now they're hitting the deck, popping off their flares. MI-24s or something. And Brian Perkins said, we live in a clown world. Oh, you're telling me. Uh, <laughs> we've been in clown world. Uh, but with that, that's the end of the clip. And we're now moving on from that little bit of location unknown news. And on to our last bit where we got to see the Russian casualty report. Over the past 24 hours. And it has been quite high. Ooh! And the three bobcats. The three bobcats are looking juicy. I'm telling you what. They got on the right side. Russia will surrender soon. Nah, nah, I doubt that. But they really should, though. If they were if they were smart, they would just, you know, pack their crap up and go back home. I think they would. I think they would pack up their crap and go home. Sadly, the Russians are not smart enough for that. But they did lose three special equipment vehicles today. They also lost 700 Russian soldiers, wounded and killed, nine armored personnel carriers, 50 supply trucks, nine main battle tanks, 16 artillery pieces, and 37 drones. It was a really good day overall today for the Ukrainian armed forces and their defense of the country. Moving on out of the casualty report and on into the Ukrainian front lines, I'm going to make sure to say this. There has been a decent amount of battle activity today, but there has been act no actual frontline changes throughout the entirety of Ukraine. The Ukrainians have been able to hold the defensive today incredibly well, inflicting high losses on Russian attackers and stomping their advance deeper into Ukraine. Moving on down into the area of Kremena, we got to see that the Russians got hit by some FPV drones inside the Kremena forest. We're going to be muting that, but we can see the Russian tank right there. And we now see the drone flying on its way to go on the mission of destruction against the Russians. A therapeutic driving set intro alone is worthy of subscription. Oh, thank you. Hey, thank that's you. what I'm talking about, man. I love to hear it. I love the static. Oh, and uh, it looks like the static ended. We now see it getting hit a second time. This is even funnier the second time.
And that's the end of the clip, but still showing the impressive work of the Ukrainian brigades in the area, continuing to inflict losses on the Russian armor operating near to the forest and making sure that they never try and do that again, or at least successfully. Moving on from that, we're now going to be going down to the area of Bulbazna, where we got to see some untold destruction. This was an ammo depot. It got hit by a HIMARS, and we never got to see the footage of the actual explosion, but we did get to see the video here of the aftermath, and it appears that the entire area has been leveled from the explosion. What's in there? What's in there? <laughs> 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 Oh. Well, that's the end of the clip, and uh, it seems as though the Russians are starting their, out their mating call uh, tryouts this year inside the ruins of the ammo dump. Moving on out of Pazna and further towards the front lines and past Bakhmut, because nothing happened there today, it's time for us to move on down towards the area of Vivka, where we got to see that the Russian forces were once again losing pretty decently. They were taking some pretty nice high losses. We got to see the Russians here filming the aftermath of a FPV strike on their BMP-1. It appears to have already been uh, fizzled out. Was like a like this BMP sizzled. And that's uh, the end of this clip. Can you, can you believe that somebody in the live chat, it was a Russian bot, I think, he came in and said, Enforcer Matt's in the Illuminati. It's like, I've been called a lot of things over the course of this channel, and the bots have said all kinds of wild insults, but I've never been called part of the Illuminati yet. That's a new one. Where's my invite? I gotta tell you, I wish, uh, I, I wish I was a part of the Illuminati, because it, at least then everything would be illuminated. You know what I mean? Like, that oh, would be yeah, kind of nice. Illuminated. I mean, like, but you know... It's, uh, uh, naughty. It's like Illuminati. Uh, it, it's like Yahtzee, uh, but but illuminated. Illuminati. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Like Those two don't go together well. No. <laughs> 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 whoa. No, yeah. whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Dude, it did not click until I put them together. And I was like, oh, no. I was like, no, no, no. That's not good. But anyways... Moving on from that to the area of Orlivka, we got to see some T-72s <laughs> burning in a field. It appears that one ran over the other at some point, but they both ended up getting destroyed, both of them Russian, and it appears that they uh, are cooking nicely. Also, I love the emblem at the top right. It seems very American. <laughs> Jennifer Will went, no! Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Oh, no, 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 no. And also, who did Texas? Yes, it was a joke. It was a joke. The uh, viewer clarified that. Oh, they did? I didn't see it. Yeah, yeah, they did. <laughs> they did clarify oh. it. I'd still like, like to know where my invite's at, though. It's a prank! It's a prank! Man, look at this tank mounting that other tank. Yeah, I know. Look at that. And this was burning so nicely. Someone said, you can, you can uh, join the Illuminati on their website. I've got a website now. Uh, let me guess, you're going to join the Illuminati for a small fee of $99 one-time payment, non-refundable. Man, it's the damn search of, Church of Scientology. <laughs> but anyways, oh, moving Gotta buy a book now. <laughs> oh, dang it. Now I gotta go buy their super yacht, dang no. <laughs> But anyways, moving on from that and up into the areas to Polve and Berdici, we did get to see some more Russian armored personnel carriers being destroyed on this part of the front near Evdivka. Oh, okay. But there's the BMP-3. It's about to get hit. Kabooey! And it is smoking. We can already see the commanders weaseling his way out of the turret and getting out of there. And now here comes the driver getting out as well. And there they go. It looks like no one else is getting out. Maybe the gunner is snoozing? The gunner is um, cruising for a bruising. Oh, no, the gunner's getting out now. He was just a little slow. Oh, Blit! Oh, my hair is on fire, Blit! And so we can now see uh, the other two crew members. And now, oh, he's bald! 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 I'm a bald and man, he's Jerry! Bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> bald and bankrupt? Is that you? Every Russian soldier is bald and bankrupt if you have no hair. Oh, my <laughs> lord! Oh, my god, man, that was like a Michael Bay explosion. Jeez. To shreds. <laughs> that would do a great in a thumbnail. That would. You know, I should have used that as a thumbnail. <laughs> 
Man, they did another replay on this. Two shreds, they say. It's literally shreds of BNP. I thank you, LSA Sergeant Pigman, for finding that funny because I had no idea that combining the two would make it sound like that. I was like, whoa, Nelly, whoa. Uh, but anyways, we get to, oh my, wait a minute. Did you notice that, Matthew? That BMP3 is gone. Nothing left. There's not even wheels on the ground left. It is literally just burning gas, and that's it. Nothing else is left. Man, so those new Ukrainian laser cyber weapons, man. You know, those uh, type that Russia's been talking about in the, in the labs. <laughs> yeah, dude, they'd be cooking them up in the lab. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. There's another BMP3 over there, and I think the Ukrainians are uh, eyeballing this one as well. It's a little juicy. And hey, Eric, no pressure. No pressure. We know you're not a bot. We know you're not a bot. We know you're just joking. It's all right. But, oh! oh, sorry, Eric. Yeah, it looked like a bot comment. I was scared for a minute. It was, it was, it was like telling Andrew he was like the general of something something, and it said I was the Illuminati. I was like, huh? This looks like an average bot. But no, it's just Eric. I thought you knew that after a while. I mean, he was like, it's a joke. It's a prank. And I saw that like three times in the chat. And I was like, yeah, Matthew probably knows at this point. Uh, and, and then he never saw. I was like, dang. Man. I was ignorant to it. I was so ignorant. I was sitting up here the whole time thinking Eric's after me. But I let him remain, though, as I was kind of entertained by the Illuminati joke. But I'm glad I didn't pull the trigger. Otherwise, he'd been gone wrongfully. It was funny. It was funny. Uh, you know, we uh, moving on into our next clip and showing you all a Russian running and crawling into an abandoned Abrams near to the front lines. Uh, while we show this, because there's not really a lot to talk about, it's just a guy showing the inside of a you know, of an abandoned Abrams. Uh, we've been called everything. I've been called a lizard person. Uh, that was a very common one at the beginning of the war. Uh, and then it was George Soros funded. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, uh, paid by the CIA was a really common one. That's where the CIA thing comes from. Um, Someone called me Mad Bastard Enforcer Matt. That seemed to be a common one for a while yeah, and then until we got, that went away. And then we got called a Marifatty. Uh, and then we've been called Shills. Uh, and then we've been called a whole bunch of uh, ultra-political stuff in every single regard, in every single direction. Um, you know, you name it, we've been called that. Um so I mean, we actually like, call all kinds of slurs too by a couple of uh, you know hot dogs men and things like that, which I thought they weren't about that uh, that life, but apparently they are. Yeah, apparently so. It, it, it shocks me too. But really quickly, let, let us move on to this next clip of the Third Brigade using their SPGs. But we have been called literally everything. Um, so you know, hearing anything, it's shocking. Oh, well, it's not really shocking. It's kind of uh, you know par for the course these days. That's why we always assume it's bonds because we've heard literally everything said uh, unironically. All right, we're going to be viewing that, but we see them getting the powder charges ready to go. Yeah, that's right. I've been called Bert and Ernie. Tom is right. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Bert and Ernie. Um, <laughs> I forgot about that one. The, let's see. What else? The Grift Forcer, some stuff like that. We've been called everything. Like, if you can come up with something, we've been called it. Uh, but, but you know, that's why we take everything seriously. It's like when someone says something, it's like, they might be saying that unironically. Because we can't pick up context in chats either. Like, they're just written text. So we can't pick up that there's sarcasm or a joke behind it. We just look at it as what it's literally being written as. We see here the 3rd Brigade dropping some clusters on the Russians. And with that... That's the end of the clip, and really interesting to see. Nice to know the 3rd Brigade's continuing to do their thing. And moving on from that, and down, and let me make sure, okay, and down out of the Evdivka area, it's time for us to move on into the southern front. There, of course, hasn't been really a lot of action down here today, even video action. Um, but moving on from the, uh, from the Evdivka front to Dorzhanka, we were able to see the destroyed turret of a Mista S which is a uh, larger SPG that is used by the Russian army. A lot of them have been destroyed in Ukraine. This is another one, and surprisingly, its turret is intact. You can actually see the turret basket right there sticking out of the left side of the, uh, of the picture, uh, which is really interesting. But anyways, moving on from that and into our next clip near to the area of Robotne and Novoprokopivka, we were also able to see the shelling of Russian forces by the corn group. You know, whatever the corn seems like. Big on the leash. Freak on a leash, that's right. And there goes the cluster bombs. And another thing, y'all, another thing that they never tell you, 
um, until you start to become a larger channel like we are, uh, is that you start to get attacked by random people out of nowhere. Like they just say things to say things, hoping that it gets them some, uh, like some credit or some viewership or something. And that's wild. Like I, I actually didn't know that that's just a thing that you have to start dealing with, but you'd have people like trying to make like expose videos on the most obvious things. Did you know that the enforcer is pro Ukrainian? It's like, if you did not know that you have to be living under a rock about this channel and just have no idea, you know, like stuff like that. Uh, but you see the uh, cluster bomb still raining down on these Russians. Mr. Diggs said, I have to admit, I kind of like Bert and Ernie. I'll be honest with you, I kind of leaned into that for a minute. I was like leaning so heavily toward putting Bert and Ernie on a t-shirt. Like I was, <laughs> I was telling the enforcer about that the whole time. He's like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if we want to do that one. I was like, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm really liking that idea. Honestly, it's not that bad. I mean, <laughs> it's not that bad at <laughs> but all. But the only problem is we run into copyright problems is the uh, Bert and Ernie characters are owned by Sesame Street, which is owned by someone else. I don't know who it is. Yeah, that's true. I think I think it's the Jim Henson estate, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but moving on from that and out of the southern front, we did get one clip out of the cranky area, which has been very quiet recently, showing what the Russians are calling the drone destroyer. It is just five AK-74s strapped together on a one mount. So it's kind of like a cheap uh, quad maxim, but with AKs. <laughs> <laughs> what in the roll tied hell is that? I have no idea. It's what the Russians Man, that's came up something, with. That's something that some Alabama guys would rig up right there with all those guns just on that rack. <laughs> that's looking real Alabama, real sus. I'm telling you, it is sus, sussy, uh, you know, very, very, very sussy. Uh, I was trying to figure out where to go with that, and I was like, I have no idea. But moving on from that, it's time for us to get up to Kiev to cover the speech from President Volodymyr Zelensky here on day 756 of the war. So let me get y'all into the speech. And without further ado, here is the peach. Speech! Speech! Про you, Ukraine, Ukraine, підсумки за цей день. Почав день з доповіді головкома Олександра Сирського та начальника генерального штабу Анатолія Баргилевича. Основні наші дії, ситуація зараз, ключові напрямки, заплановані кроки. Максимально активно працюємо з партнерами та щодо внутрішнього виробництва зброї, щоб дати нашим воїнам більш необхідних засобів. Друге. Багато міжнародної роботи сьогодні, дуже активний день, розмова з прем'єр-міністром Індії. Подякував пану прем'єр-міністру Моді за незмінну підтримку територіальної цілісності та суверенітету нашої держави. Також за участь в роботі щодо формули миру на рівні радників. Запросив Індію взяти участь в першому глобальному саміті миру, який готуємо в Швейцарії. Дуже важливо, щоб така глобальна сила, як Індія, проявила своє лідерство у відновленні справедливого миру та у захисті цілей та принципів статуту ООН. Саме в цьому сенс нашої формули миру. Звичайно, обговорили з паном прем'єр-міністром Індії двосторонні відносини. Сьогодні ж провів кілька міжнародних зустрічей у Києві. В день зустрівся із міністром оборони Нідерландів. Дуже предметна і хороша розмова. Ключове – це захист наших міст та сіл, це ППО для України, реальний порятунок наших людей від російського терору. Також збільшення можливостей нашої армії. Нідерланди – один із найбільш послідовних наших партнерів у захисті людського життя та справедливості. Ввечері провів зустріч із Джейком Саліваном, радником президента Сполучених Штатів, з питань національної безпеки. Теж дуже змістовна, цілком конкретна розмова. І про оборону взаємодію, і про спільні політичні результати, яких маємо досягти. Я вдячний Америці за підтримку нашої держави і людей. І це життєво важливо, щоб американське лідерство залишалось міцним. Міцним у захисті міжнародного правопорядку. Ми маємо бути стійкими щодо різних викликів. Ми маємо бути далекобійними, щоб здолати Путіна. 
а не перебувати в ситуації, коли сумніви щодо міцності Заходу допомагають цьому божевільному. Путін повинен програти, і це питання життя і смерті для демократичного світу. Коли він програє, демократичний світ отримає хорошу перспективу на покоління вперед. Сьогодні я взяв участь у саміті за демократію, і це вже втретє відбувається, такий формат. Цьогоріч Республіка Корея об'єднує демократичних лідерів, вдячний усім, хто дбає про збереження свободи народів та розвиток людей, попри всі складнощі, попри увесь хаос в сьогоднішньому світі. І ще одне. Наш Харків. Вже більше двох років Харків та область зазнають страшних російських ударів. Зруйнована ракетами Салтівка, пошкоджені інші райони та вулиці міста. Зруйновані села та містечка в області. Сьогодні черговий удар Росії по Харкові. Ні на що не здатний вплинути, окрім того, що Україна ще більш принципово та влучно відповідатиме. Від російської ракети у Харкові сьогодні п'ять людей загинуло. Мої співчуття усім рідним та близьким, кожному пораненому надається необхідна допомога. Але цього замало. Всі це мають усвідомлювати. Харкову потрібно достатньо систем ППО. Сумщині потрібно ППО, Чернігівщині, усім іншим нашим регіонам, які потерпають від російського терору. Ці захисні системи є у партнерів і партнерам треба зрозуміти, що ППО має захищати життя. Дякую всім, хто захищає нормальне життя в наших містах і селах. Дякую всім у світі, хто допомагає. Дякую кожному, кожній, хто б'ється заради нашої держави і людей, хто працює на оборону, на Україну. Ми обов'язково маємо вистояти і гарантувати Україні надійну безпеку. Всій Україні. Слава Україні! from President Volodymyr Zelensky. And we're about to be moving on into the second segment of this night's news, where we get to talk to all of y'all. I gotta say, it has been a very fun night getting to talk to all of y'all about the news. And we're about to get to talk to all of y'all about whatever y'all want to talk about. Literally anything that comes to mind, we will be able to talk about it. Uh, and I gotta say, folks, it's been incredible again tonight. And we, we always go into these streams expecting that you know, no one's really going to be watching. That's kind of the mindset I go in with. So any amount of viewers, I'm always blown away with because, you know, we, we are just, uh, we treasure having all of y'all here. And tonight at the peak, there were 8,000 people here. Uh, and, and over the course of the entire stream, 42,000 people have watched it already just for an hour and 44 minutes. Uh, that is nuts to me. Insane. It's, it's not as big as last night. Last night was, was insane. And the night before that was even crazier, but this still is, just so crazy to me to see so many people here on our channel watching it uh and for us to be able to share this 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 massive amount of time and it's almost three hours usually nightly with all of y'all and be such a big part of y'all's lives and for y'all to be such a big part of ours it means a great deal to us and i gotta thank so many of y'all who are new here tonight for subscribing because now as i'm talking on this stream we have just passed 1.2 thousand subscribers gained over just today um from when they started local time to now uh in between the short war video that we put out earlier today and this stream 1.2 thousand people have joined the lee spring army again brand new today uh we are entirely honored to all of these new folks who've joined i thank you all so much for subscribing to this channel and i hope that you all really do enjoy this place there are so many great people who have been on this adventure with us as we've covered this news of the war and other things that have happened around the world for quite such a long time and I'm, I'm glad that you're joining us at this point and i hope that you're around as long as many of our old guards have been around for almost two years at this point and well beyond that into the future but still thank you all once again for joining us and we're going to make sure to get to talk to all of y'all both the folks who've been here forever and the folks who just got here um uh, and so with that what do we got matthew all right, and before we get to our poll question real quick, uh, just an update on the attack that was happening in Ukraine while our news uh, segment was going on. Russia has actually launched hypersonic missiles uh, toward Kyiv itself. And according to initial reports, the hypersonic missiles were successfully intercepted over Kyiv, which is a feat in itself. So it looks like uh, Ukraine air defense is working way better than you know, like expected even, and they're shooting down all those hypersonic missiles. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what the uh, after report says as to what exactly, if anything, was hit. 
but it looks like they are successfully defending Kiev and also the other Ukrainian cities as well. So that is very positive news indeed. Um, but with that, we're moving into our poll here. And it says, Italy says it's against any type of military intervention in Ukraine. And the question to y'all is, is this a cowardly stance? 55% said yes, it is. 25% uh, said it really depends on the details. And 11% said no, it's a wise stance by France. And it meant to say Italy about that. That's, that's actually a typo right there. Um, and in my opinion, I would say that it depends on the details. If we have information that Russia plans on moving toward NATO countries to attack them, then I would say military intervention is required. But as of right now, I don't see any intel suggesting that they're actively moving toward doing that. Um, and maybe they're talking about it, but they're not actively putting stuff into place to actually attack a NATO country as it stands right now. So I won't go as far as to say it's cowardly, but I wouldn't totally rule that option off the table right now because we might need that in the future to properly defend NATO. So um, sort of a, a premature statement, in my opinion. And it was kind of pointless because if it turns out NATO needs defending, well, that stance is going to have to obviously change. Uh, but Enfor uh, Enforcer, what say you? I would have to say it is actually not that shocking to hear that the uh, Kinzels were shot down. Because we've seen them get shot down so many times now, especially heading towards the Kiev air defense perimeter. And it just shows how bad of a missile it really is. It's not a hypersonic. It's just a modified kind of revved up Kinzel uh, well, in Iskander for the most part. Because you look at a Kinzel and an Iskander, they're literally in the same frame, like the exact same frame. I think it's just that the motor in the Kinzel is a higher power than the one in the Iskander, but even then it's not by much when you really look at the stats at their top speeds uh, and then their energy bleed after their motors burn out. But beyond that, uh, to answer the actual question about Italy statements, I would have to agree with most people that it is a bit of a cowardly stance. Because you got France on one end, which is big ball in it at the moment, and acting like they are just on top of the world and they can deal with anyone and fight everyone. And then you got the Italians saying that this is a terrible stance and that there shouldn't be any kind of an attempt uh, to conduct any sort of military intervention. I don't like that. Now, I will say this. I don't like the idea of just sending NATO troops into Ukraine tomorrow. That would make no sense. And then that starts the Third World War. But I think that the Russians should always be on edge and know that it's not off the table that NATO troops could enter Ukraine at any given moment if things go too badly. Uh, that's kind of the, the hybrid I'm in, is the in-between, in-between France and Italy. I feel like the French uh, public statements are very on point. I feel like that's what the public statements should be circling around, that kind of an idea. Uh, the Italian statements are the complete opposite. And it appears that the Italians are almost going hand in hand with the Pope in the Vatican and almost saying the exact same thing. You simply have the courage of the white flag. Um, and it's like, no, 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 no. It's like, no, no, no. You don't have the courage of the white flag. That is called cowardice. Uh, you know, that's that's called being a quitter. And I'll tell you something, damn it. Ukraine ain't no quitter. Can I get an LSA in the chat? But beyond that, I hope that does address that well. And we are on to the next one. All right, and that was our last poll to address. So we are now moving back into our Super Chat questions. And first up, we have a very generous $50 donation hey! from Bob Y, a longtime channel legend. And thank you very much, Bob, as always, for that support. He says, I can't wait to get my LSA flag. It's going right up next to my American flag. Hey! And I'm telling you what, I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. I cannot wait to see it, Bob Y. I, I cannot wait. I'm so excited for that. And I got to thank you for the massive support, Bob Y, and helping this channel to keep on running. And I cannot wait. I just, I, I literally cannot wait for everyone to get their flags. It is incredible. Um, and right now, um, by the way, uh, speaking of which, on the LSA flags, I want to make sure to keep everyone uh, on a bit of a notice in case y'all are wanting to get them. Um, there is an hour and 10 minutes left before we close this limited edition run so if you want a flag there's only an hour and 10 minutes left before it closes uh to explain why it's closing uh today at midnight instead of lsa day it's because there have been so many orders that have already come in that if we wait until LSA, LSA day to close this thing, we would never be able to fulfill all of the orders and get them out uh and so we want to make sure to end it today but while it's ending today we have completely removed the cap for the night so if you want the flag you can get it there is no limit it's not going to sell out uh at all until midnight and then it will close completely uh so with that i hope that does uh address that fairly well once again and if you want to get to the store to be able to get the flag you click on the link in the description below or you click on our shopify uh 
I think, link right below the live stream, and it will take you directly to this website, officialenforcerstore.com, and you'll be able to pre-order a flag. There's a limit of two per customer. Each one of them is hand-signed by me. There are double-sided ADD polyester flags that are incredibly nice and have a dimension of three feet by five feet, or about a meter tall and about 1.3 meters across. Uh, so with that, I hope that does address that little plug fairly well. But beyond that, I cannot wait for everyone to get these. There are so many of them that are going out. It, I mean, it is uh, truly insane, the number of flags that we're going to have to get out. My hand will be tired. Unbelievably tired. It's going to be insanely tired. Uh, and I got to thank all of y'all so much once again, including you, Bob Y, for getting a flag. And I cannot wait to see all of the pictures of these flags everywhere in the world, here in America, up in Canada, down in Mexico, over in Japan and South Korea, uh, flags in Britain, Germany, um, Ireland, um, France, uh, hell, everywhere, even in Ukraine, there's going to be a decent amount of them that actually end up inside of Ukraine. And I cannot wait to see that. And I thank every single one of y'all, including you, Bob White, for getting the flag. And I thank you, Bob White, as well, for supporting this channel tonight and helping us to keep this thing running. It honestly does blow us away when people are still supporting the channel with the limited edition thing going. Because we kind of expect that people are going to pick a Super Chat or the flag. Uh, and people are still getting the flags and then sending in Super Chats on top of the flags. Uh, and I got to thank y'all for that. That is truly incredibly kind of y'all to do. And so with that... Thank you so much once again, Bob White. I hope that does address that well. And with that, we are on to the next one. All right. And also, Enforcer, I've been scouring Twitter uh, because I'm looking for some news about the current attacks because, uh, obviously, a lot of people are concerned about this. And we're actually getting some video evidence of air defense in action uh, over Kiev and them shooting down some missiles if you want to take a look at our Twitter profile. And we also have some pictures as well as the um, uh, measures that the civilians are taking to take shelter from the missiles as well if you want to show that. Sure. Uh, so our first clip here is of loud explosions near Kiev. It seems as though I haven't seen the clip. It sounds as though there are some large explosions. I'm not sure if we see air defense active in the clip, but I'll show that to you all right here. And there's one explosion. And there's another one. Then we see an explosion up in the sky. No boom. Oh, there we go. Pretty big ones. Pretty big ones. Very large ones, as a matter of fact. And then right above that, we also have a picture showing the Kiev subway, uh, as it is right now, with civilians sheltering inside. Interestingly enough, it's not as large a number of civilians as we would have seen in the earlier part of the war, and it seems like less people are seeking uh, shelter from Russian uh, air attacks as they continue this far into the war, almost uh, two years and a month later. Uh, so, interesting to see, but still nice to know that people are taking shelter and trying to stay safe in this attack, and also great to hear the Ukrainian air defense is working incredibly hard overhead to try and shoot down all of these incoming Russian air targets, missiles, drones, and everything else combined. But with that, I hope that does address that quite well and gives you all a little bit of an update on the ongoing air attack that's happening in Ukraine. Uh, and with that, we are on to the next one. All right, and we're now moving in back into our Super Chat segment. And this first one here is going to go to Leora Avagil, uh, who puts in a $50 donation. And thank you very much for that support, hey! by the way. And I believe that is not their first ever support. I've, I've been not seen that name in a very long time. Uh, but thank you very much for that support. And I said, it's always nice to see you guys reporting as always. And thank you so much, uh, Leora, for the support. And thank you for enjoying this channel. And thank you so much for saying... That's nice to see us reporting as always. I make sure that we run this thing like clockwork. It covers the Ukraine war through and through, and we always will until the end of the war. You're not going to see us desperately claw for views by trying to become a political shill or reacting to other people's YouTube channels, hoping that their clout can get us views. You'll never see us do something like that. You will always see us here doing the same thing every single night until the war ends, which is covering this news. And I thank you so much, Leora, for appreciating our dedication to this so much and appreciating it enough that you would uh, support us to help us to make this possible and keep this a reality. That means a lot to us and I got to thank you on an, an unbelievable amount for that and thank you once again for sticking with this channel and finding us to be a quality source of news and so with that thank you so much once again and we are on to the next one.
And the next one goes to Say What, who puts uh, in a $20 donation and does not leave a comment. And Jesus Cabrera put in a 10 as well and also did not leave a comment either. Um, but Say What, Jesus, thank you very much for that support. And Say What said nothing. Uh, <laughs> what happened, Say What? But Enforcer, what say you? And thank you to Say What and Jesus for the support and help of this channel to keep running. Because both of y'all helped this channel to be possible. And if it wasn't for both of you. We wouldn't be able to keep this thing running, you know what I mean? Y'all didn't throw in comments, but I know what the comments are, because y'all been around forever, you know what I mean? Uh, so I gotta thank y'all both once again. And with that, we're gonna be moving on to the next one. And our next one is gonna go to Lee Parkinson, uh, who puts in a $20 donation. And uh, thank you very much, Lee, once again, for that support. He says, I'm a big fan of the channel, and it's good to see you both happy again. LSA and North Indian Manchester, UK. And Lee... Thank you very much. It's good to see myself happy again, I must admit to you, um, because we've cleared our schedules out quite a bit. But then I've refilled it back up with new responsibilities because I have to stay busy. Um, but Enforcer, what say you? And I got to thank you so much, Lee Parkinson, uh, for the support, being one of our British viewers, and your first support to the channel, according to YouTube. And thank you so much for being a big fan, and thank you so much for enjoying that we're happy again. I am so happy because this is truly my passion uh, and, and something that I've always enjoyed doing since I started doing this. Uh, and it was a crazy, it was a crazy journey because uh, my dad originally went um, when I was doing this because, you know, my dad was an attorney. And so this, he was kind of a large part of the story here. When I originally started doing this, I, I fell in love with it immediately. I knew that this was something I absolutely adored doing. And if I could choose to do something the rest of my life, it probably would be this or to get into uh, some kind of politics politics, something like that. Uh, and so after a while, uh, law school started to come around and I had to take the LSAT. Uh, and my dad was like, what are you, what, what are you stupid? You can't do YouTube as a, as, as a career. You can't make a business out of that. You got to go become an attorney. And so I went and took the LSAT and I went and applied to law school, got in and everything. And then we started going through law school and then both Matthew and me found out it sucked. And then our dad was actually like, you know, y'all seem unhappy. Maybe if y'all enjoy doing what you do on YouTube. Maybe you ought to just, you know, drop out of law school and do YouTube full time. Uh, well, we already were doing it full time, but really just dedicate our lives to doing YouTube. Uh, and so then we were finally like, yep, yeah, you know what? It sucks. We don't like it. We don't enjoy law school. We don't really enjoy the law that much. Uh, and on top of that, the legal profession as a whole has many flaws, like an incredibly large amount of flaws. Uh, and, and I'm not going to go into the specifics on that, but you kind of figure that out even just going through law school and also seeing some of the uh, extremely greasy looking people uh, who make up certain organizations that deal with the legal profession. Uh, and so I was like, you know what? I don't think this is for me. I'd rather do YouTube. So then we both dropped out and now we're here and I feel a lot happier just doing this and focusing on this entirely. It is it is something I look forward to doing every single day. I look forward to writing our reports on Patreon that I put out every few days, talking about some of the big things happening in Ukraine or some of the uh, things that we've been able to extrapolate from the information we've gotten. I love making the short war videos and I love doing these as well. Uh, it like doing these live streams. I love doing it all, and I got to thank you so much, Lee Parkinson, for really uh, noticing the massive improvement in our attitudes here on the stream because we are so happy to do this. And also, let's go check out North Enden in Manchester in the UK. So this is it right here, this little area. Interesting. Y'all have a little cinema there, the Block Cinema. North Enden. Can I see, like, generally where it says in the country? So, this is up at Manchester, which is near Liverpool, which is in kind of, not, well, I, yeah, I guess it is kind of the Midlands right up here uh, in England. So, that's where it is. I think we drove through that block at one point. We actually drove on the M62 north of Manchester and into Liverpool. I think I vaguely remember that. Actually, to be exactly correct, we drove in. Where is Blackpool? Some some people from Britain are like, no, don't say you drove through there. Yeah, we drove through. Uh, it, did, it looked honestly like uh, Montgomery, Alabama. It wasn't that bad. Uh, but we drove through the M60, and then we took the A580, I believe, into Liverpool. I think that's how we ended up getting in there. And I remember we drove down this particular, the A565 or something like that, uh, down to this hotel. Um, I think it was this one, actually. It looks like they renamed it. The Titanic Hotel, Liverpool. No, I don't think that was it, actually. Hang on. Huh. 
where in the world okay so downtown liverpool is right here and then there's that tunnel and then there's t titanic memorial thing and then let's see there was a oh yeah we stayed around there somewhere yeah there was a stadium nearby that's what i'm trying to find here we go so we actually stayed at this hotel, the Staybridge Suites or the Leonardo Hotel, Liverpool, because I think it was attached to this thing and there was some kind of a thing going on when we were there. Uh, but it was a pretty nice hotel and it had a nice view and everything. And what was really cool is that you could actually see the old White Star building and I think the current Cooner building uh, right here, uh, which was really cool. Uh, but beyond that, I got to thank you so much for being from this part of Britain. Really cool place. But let's go back over here and let's drop down on Street View to see what this little part of Manchester looks like. Really nice, actually. Are you from Manchester, bro? You're from Manchester! <laughs> yeah, you asked for Smithy G. I'm from Birmingham. Come on down, I'll break your freaking legs. Um, That's not... That's you not... see back there, they had the proper bar uh, barber. You want a good haircut? Go to a proper barber. Let's see here. See? Oh, yeah. Proper uh, here's barbers. a right over there. Proper barber. Yeah, proper. Open seven days. <laughs> Man, they're open all the time. Man, and then when the mob uh, conducts a hit, they call that DNA flooring. Because your DNA is flooring the place now. Uh, but beyond that, let's see here. Robin's Hood. That is straight Robin's copyright Hood. infringement. <laughs> Disney is going to come down and massacre these people who are doing <laughs> that. Like... That is wild, man. Robin's Hood. That is wild, man. Also, they're using the actual picture. I'm not gonna oh lie, I'd eat there. <laughs> I'd eat there being called Robin's Hood. <laughs> and they got they got pizza, kebabs, and burgers. They're like hitting all three major food groups with that. Pretty impressive stuff. And then they got appetizer, like just the appetizer. Uh, and then they have, let's see here, they have escape, which some people would like to probably do. Uh, and then you got box to box. That sounds wrong. I'll and then you got that. Fusion. <laughs> then you got William Hill. And then you got Vision Service. Um, and then what what else, what other businesses? The Northern De just eat. Um, then Hunters. That's the real Here to place. get you there. Oh, it's a realty office. <laughs> Dude, cut off the there. Here to get you. This is like, oh uh, <laughs> a veterinarian. Veterinary surgery. Surgery. Huh, interesting. Apparently a lot of animals need surgery. Uh, let's see here. What else? We got Fire Away, uh, which is... What man, that's what the Ukrainians be doing on the Russians, man. man that's, that's, that's their story. Man, this is what folks be doing in downtown Birmingham. Fire Away. Uh, and then moving on down the street, uh, we got more food. Well, there's an endless amount of food options on the street. It seems like everything's a restaurant. Pound Express. <laughs> there's Pound Express over there. Oh, what are they selling? <laughs> Uh, let's see here. They're selling, um, plus and well, plus, plus, it's plus. a pound shop. So it's like a dollar store. Oh, um, uh, there's so many jokes to be made. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, we got Oasis international foods. We got the national health service right here. Actually, that's the NHS building. Uh, and then we have, uh, let's see here. Uh, Nepalese and Indian cuisine restaurant and takeaway yummies, max appliances. Uh, let's see. What is this? Gray. Bet Fred. Uh, and then we got... <laughs> bet Fred. Yeah, bet on him. B&M Express. And then we also have Market. Uh, simply Market. Uh, we have Otten Penna. Um, <laughs> interesting. Uh, let's see here. Alexandros. The Atlantic Fish Bar. Uh, we also have Drumstick. Um... <laughs> We have Viet Guy. This, what does this, that mean? Well, you see, the the back origin behind this story, Matthew, is that the guy who owns this restaurant was a part of the Viet Cong. He then moved to Britain after the Vietnam War was over, and he got known as the Viet Guy. Uh, and so he opened up a restaurant. Viet Guy. <laughs> Viet Guy. And then we have Costa, uh, which is a oh, pretty that's nice good. I remember shop. that. Yeah. Uh, and then, let's see. We got Go Local. <laughs> it sounds almost like Go Loco. It's like, eh, I don't know. Uh, but let's see here. Uh, let's see, what's this show? I'm going to open up a competitor across the street and call it Go Foreign. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Go Chinese or something like that. And then we got Blend Barbershop. We got Le Nails. That's like Le Guppy. Uh, but Le Guppy's a little bit bigger. <laughs> it's a little bit bigger of a thing. Uh, and then we got, what? what's this? We're almost down to the end of the street, actually. We're oh, a subway and a $5 foot long. And qu quid, quid, quids in discount. Electrical hardware. What? Well, quids. 
Dude, and not only not only do they do key cutting, gardening, do it yourself, and launch batteries, they also do iron mongery. <laughs> They're iron mongers. <laughs> iron mongers. Yeah, look at that. That's crazy. What I does can't... that mean? Like legitimately, what the hell is an iron mongery? I mean, they trade in like iron goods, you know, like wrought iron stuff. Uh, that's what that huh. means. I, I haven't actually seen that uh, before. Like, the, like from what I understand, like being an iron monger kind of like died out in like the latter part of the 19th century even in the uk so interesting to, well you know i might be wrong about that lee parkinson and all the british viewers here so correct me if i'm wrong um but that is really interesting to see iron mongery as an actual thing on a store front like that's actually pretty cool uh but let's see here and then we got express solicitors um interesting oh no lawyers <laughs> oh no uh and then we got the... Look, the, 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 the magic bus wait a minute did i say sorry kid on the front of the bus what go back Let's see here. What did that say on the front? Sorry. Oh, not. sorry not. I thought I said sorry, kid. And it said on the top, magic boss. I was like, what the hell? They're taunting the, they're taunting the customers. <laughs> sorry, kid. No fair. No fair. No fair. But beyond that, nice, nice Main Street. A nice Main Street. Not bad. Well, let's go back into the neighborhoods. Fairly average British neighborhood. Uh, it looks like they got some plywood up here or something, though. They might be doing renovations. Yeah, they're building something on the other side, actually. But beyond that, it looks like an average British neighborhood to me. Uh, most of these were built just after World War II in, like, the 50s and the 60s. So you can pretty much see the exact same neighborhoods throughout the entirety of the UK because that's when a lot of these were made. Or they were made kind of near to the end of the 19th century, and they're all late Victorian era buildings, and then those are very common as well. These in particular, these very simple ones here, are probably late Victorian era buildings. Uh, I might be mistaken, but they look like the design that would have been seen all over the place. But beyond that, Lee, very cool to see your little part of Manchester down there in North Enden. And I got to thank you so much once again for the support and joining this channel and helping us keep this thing running. And I hope that you enjoyed our little look around your part of Manchester. A really cool looking place. And maybe one day when we come back over there, we'll be able to wander around Manchester a lot more. Because we really just drove through last time. And then we went straight into Liverpool. And then from Liverpool, uh, we went into Northern Wales. We drove all the way through Northern Wales. Uh, all the way to the town of Bedgillert. And if I can find that. And it's ought to be somewhere around here. And I'm, for some reason, completely forgetting welsh geography uh, but it's somewhere in this area um that's that's all i know it's somewhere up here and then we drove to uh this town here uh plethma dog if that's how it's pronounced uh then we hung out here we got gas at let's see where in the world is that gas station matthew it was like right around here yeah, i can't remember that um we got gas... oh, Tes uh, tesco's uh over there on the left yeah yeah we went to that tesco right there but oh, we, yeah, also... when the, we went to that tesco yeah, but we also got Click gas. Click on that Tesco. I'm, I'm, let, me, let me try to jog my memory. Click on that Tesco. Wait, I'll drop us down in the parking lot. Remember, this is where those kids were gathered around in front of the store, and they were all speaking Welsh, and we were like, what the hell is that? And then I was like, oh, it's Welsh. Remember? It was this Tesco. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We did go to that Tesco. I remember that one now. Okay, that jogged my memory. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And, then, my dog. and then the little the, the kids on the bikes were like right around these shopping carts right here. Uh, and then they were talking in Welsh and everything. And, you know, and, and oh, I mean, you, you and Pops went to the store. It was me and Mama who stayed outside. And then that's when we heard them speaking Welsh. And we were like, oh, my God, that's Welsh. And it was really cool. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, we went, we, went into the, we went into the store. And there were some people in there, like, speaking, like, yeah, I guess it was Welsh. Like, I sound goofy, like, saying I don't know what it is. <laughs> so but it was Welsh. language. <laughs> yeah, walked in there. And it was like they were speaking, like, uh some like language like i've never even heard anything remotely close to this before and i couldn't understand a word like they they were speaking like proper english too and they still had that thick like welsh accent on them and you couldn't understand a word it was just like gibberish and also look at the look at the landscape that surrounded this place it was gorgeous out here in this part of north wales it was a beautiful place uh but this tesco we went to in particular but there's a gas station like right down here yeah yeah wait a minute, wait a minute. i see it i see it it's not on it's not on the google maps but you'll know it when we, this one right here, Matthew. Remember? Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. This yeah. is the this is the place where we had a hard time finding a hotel. Like we had to like pull off the side of the road at this gas station or something afterward, and we couldn't find where to stay. And we thought we were going to sleep in the car because there was nowhere like available to stay. Yeah, and then also, Matthew, remember when we were getting the gas? That tiny little train came rolling out of that station over there across the street, and then like snaked its way right in front of the gas station, went rolling away. 
Yeah, it was it was around this point on the trip when it was starting to become a bit of a nightmare because there was nowhere to go. Uh, so you were just kind of stuck in the car, and um, at this point we were panicking. I think we we're like low key panicking, thinking where are we going to stay? Like all the hotels were booked, and we we drove out to the middle of nowhere somewhere after this, and it was a hotel without any air conditioner in it, and it was like from the eighteen hundreds. Uh, oh. It was the only place open. No, that was way down the road, man. Do you remember we drove from here in Plath Madog, and then they said there's hotels somewhere and i forgot where that somewhere was but i think we ended up wait a minute no 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 wait a minute i think i remember what happened we drove from there and we drove down to bed let me just type it in i gotta go find that town bed galert there we go i mean damn it was right up there like that's crazy it was it was right there but we drove up here to this town and then we were like, let's get a hotel here. And all the hotels were obviously booked. This is one of the prettiest towns in the UK, according to surveys. And it was. It was really pretty. Uh, oh, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have a picture standing right there in front of that bridge on the right. Like, I, I was standing right over there on the other side of that, uh, that little uh, stream. Yeah, and then this was also where we went into the ice cream shop. Let's see. Right there, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, it was this one. Remember, Matthew, we walked into this ice cream parlor. We got some ice creams, and we asked them, do you know of any hotels anywhere in the area? And then they were like, I think there's one all the way down in, like, it was like southern Wales. So then we had to go on the massive road trip through Wales, which was gorgeous, by the way, all the way Super down nice. uh, to the area around Chepstow. And that's where we ran into that shitty hotel that had no air conditioning and was, like, all run down and stuff. But it looked like a castle. Um, and... Then after that, we we're like, that sucks. And then we left and then we drove through Bristol and then down to Bath. And then we stayed at a hotel in Bath. And I think that's when we started on our trip to Cornwall. And that's when we ended up driving by Westward Ho, uh, which we were talking about not that long ago on stream. And that's when we went to that Asda here at Barnstable right there, um, right in this building. Yeah, I remember that distinctly too. Like it's bringing back so many memories. Like I really miss uh, the UK a lot. Like I really enjoyed that trip over there. And I remember going through all those places distinctly, like Be uh, Bedgalert and the other place, Portsmouth Dog, uh, all of that stuff, Snowdonia. It was just so beautiful out there in the countryside part of uh, Wales. And I saw someone said, why'd you go out there to the like the middle of the nowhere in the country in Wales? That that was the coolest part of the trip. Like I, I enjoyed seeing London, but I enjoyed going out to the uh, uh, like nowhere parts, like in Wales out here, more than I did actually being in London by a long shot. And also, I'll show you all why we went out here into the middle of nowhere. This is why. Uh, Northern Wales is completely unpopulated for the most part, uh, but it's gorgeous everywhere up in Northern Wales. It is one of the most beautiful places that is that is to be seen in Britain. And that's, that's saying a lot, because Britain is a beautiful country uh, on the natural level. And so if you go anywhere in Britain, it's gorgeous, but this was particularly gorgeous. And also, we wanted to go here because... Uh, our family actually originates from Northern Wales. Our last name comes from the area. So we wanted to come up here and see what the place looked like and see see where uh, a part of the family came. Well, actually, every part of our family came from Britain. So we kind of like hit all of the places because one part of the family is from Devon. Um, one part of the family is from Northern Wales. One part is from Southeastern England, which we touched on when we went to London. Uh, and then I think another part was from up near the border region. And we never really made it up there. Um, but we made it close. Uh, so that's kind of the story of why we went into the middle of nowhere in Wales, but it was beautiful, and I'd highly recommend the trip if y'all ever go to Britain or you're in Britain. The northern uh, Welsh area of Snowdonia is a gorgeous place and really worth the travel. Um, but it was so peaceful out there. Like, it was just so peaceful in the whole, like, entire Snowdonia area. And really, once you got down to, like, the Cornwall coast, like, that down toward that area... And I don't know what town it was we stopped in where we were like looking over those cliffs or whatever. That was like the most peaceful I've ever been in my life, like oh, in that area of minute. the country. I know where that was. Uh, it was, where in the hell was it? It was, remember Matthew, we had to drive down the zigzag road. I went too far. Uh, it was like surreal. It was like you would stand on the side of the cliff. Here looking, it is. Yep, it's right around here. It's right, here. It's no, right around this there. This is the street right here. This is it. This right yep, here. That's it. We pulled over somewhere around here and it was surreal. It was like you were, it's like you had died and you were at peace uh, in this place. It was a weird feeling. And I've never felt like that anywhere uh, in the world. And this place was super cool. And it was so quiet. Like, like, like when you're on the road, there would be cars coming down, you know, and you hear whoosh, whoosh. 
and you walk like 20 feet away from the road and you just can't hear the cars anymore. It was dead silent out there. All you could hear was the light gusts of wind and the waves crashing hundreds of feet below you on the shore. And that was it. And there were these little, there was like these two little sailboats right out here in the sea, which looks to be a little bit choppy this day. But it was perfectly calm. It was like glass out there. And there was these two little sailing boats and they were out there with their sails uh, drawn up just cast an anchor right there and they were just sitting there it was the most beautiful thing i had ever seen and i, I wish we can go back one day and see this place it was right down the street matthew remember is that place where we had to do the zigzag down um the cliff because it was such a sharp drop that uh, let me see if i can actually show that here remember the sharp drops and we had to oh go down the yeah street? yeah i yeah, I remember that. Like this, oh man, I miss. I'm, I really do miss the UK. Like seeing all these pictures and like the street view. Like you know, I don't. I don't want to say I would like totally like leave the United States and never come back. But if I could ever like, I'll probably never be able to do those because it's crazy expensive. But if I could like live there for a while and just like come back to the United States and then go back to the UK, that would be so cool to like live there extended like for a period of time. Yeah, and also, Mandy, remember this? This is when we got into the town, like, the trees opened, and we got to see everything, and we are like, wow, look at this! And, it, you know, we got to see the little brook that fed into uh, the, the pretty much the uh, Irish Sea, and it was just, it was gorgeous. It was truly incredible. Uh, you don't see stuff like this in America often, and America has a natural beauty of its own that's very unique and special, but this was something that really just blew us away. We we're like, wow, how cool. And then that's when we also, Matthew, immediately drove back up the other side. And I think I might be able to jog your memory on this one, Matthew. Because this one was really... Oh, here we go. Here's the really winding streets. Remember that damn bus, Matthew. That full-on coach-sized bus tried to take... I think it was this turn right here. Or the one right up... It was this one up the street. Like, right up here somewhere. And it tried to take the turn... And it couldn't, and we almost got hit dead on by the bus. It was this one right here. We almost got killed several times in England because, like, uh, we had so many close calls because, like, uh, we weren't familiar with the driving over there, and our dad was doing the driving, and he's a little bit, like, <laughs> he's, he's doing his best, but the driving, like, over there was a really sketchy situation. Uh, it's amazing we didn't get in a wreck at any point, but we made it through. Yeah, we made it through, but still... A beautiful place and i thank you so much once to give us support and allowing us a little bit of a moment to talk about the uk it's a beautiful country and of course we make fun of british accents on this channel all the time um but but the reason why we do that is because we went over there and we got to hear all the accents and meet such interesting people everywhere we went uh and it was truly a fantastic trip, a beautiful country, and a place I'd like to go back to one day and really get to visit a lot more. Uh, and and also that's one other thing that we can't we can't even touch on because we're kind of pressed for time even right now. Um, but there was such there there people in the UK were very nice. They would of course josh around and make jokes about us being Americans, but beyond that, they were largely very nice people all over the country. They were always very helpful, very friendly, uh, always had interesting stories, and of course, the accents changed by the mile. So you always ran into a brand new accent everywhere you went. And we're trying to figure out, uh, well, at least everyone else, but me was trying to figure out what they were saying. Uh, but I was, for some reason, able to pick on, uh, pick up uh, accents really quickly and learn uh, how to understand them. Uh, but still, you that... remember, you remember down there in the Cornwall region, uh, we were driving, and also, by the way, we had rented a a Volvo. It was the big one, like the XC90. Oh yeah, we had, we had four people. Massey we Ferguson. were down in the Cornwall area, and there was like these like like brick walls, like butted right up to the edges of the road. And it was just like empty fields like leading up to the coast. And there would be like grandmothers out there driving these Ford Focuses at like 80 miles an hour down these little narrow roads. Like, like kind of like this one, but with walls like right up next to it. I gotta find and they'd walls. be literally like skimming right up against your car, like going 80 miles an hour down these country roads. It was insane. Like they'd be like 80 year old grandmothers Here doing this go. kind of stuff. It was wild. It was like yeah, these like kinds that. of streets. Yeah. And, and they would be going like 90 and those little grannies would be right up on the steering wheel. Like they'd have their head on the steering wheel and they'd just be speed demoning it down these streets. Never yeah. seen anything <laughs> like it. Uh, like it was we, crazy. We panicked like the first time we went down on these roads and they came flying at us at like 80 miles an hour. My dad was like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Look. <laughs> it's like a grandmother, like swerving everywhere. going. Ah! <laughs> and she Man, had like was wild. she had like the headscarf on and everything like it was a true granny you know like dressed like one and everything and and she was just speeding down the street we were blown away by that uh but oh man it, there's just so much 
so much that we could talk about. Britain was an amazing place. It's the only place that we've been to outside the United States as well. Uh, so, you know, that, that's also adding to why it's amazing and incredible and cool and everything. Um, wait a minute, did we miss this castle? Because this one's actually famous here. The Tent uh, Tentacle Castle or Tentacle Castle. Like, this one's movie famous multiple times over. Um, because it's like the King Arthur Castle. Let me see if I can... Yeah, this is it. Uh, we missed that. We never went there. Hey, how like we got there? Yeah, because remember, Matthew, by this point in the trip, we had already gone to, like, I think five castles. So at this point, we're like, ah, hey, you've seen one, you've seen them all. And we just drove right by and didn't stop. Um, but still, a fun. it was a very fun time. And thank you so much once again for support. I hope that does address that well, more than well, because we really went into a massive rabbit hole about Britain. But still, thank you once again. And we are on to the next one. And the next Super Chat is going to go to Badger Bro, who puts in a $20 donation. And thank you very much, Badger Bro, for that support. He says, Enforcer, Russia weaponizes migrants from Syria to cause chaos, drain resources, and cause political division in Poland. And, um, uh oh, Ooh. it's uh, very political there. Badger Bro, this is so, this is very a hot take. A very hot take. We can't address it, sadly. But Enforcer, what say you? I thank you so much for the support, Badger Bro, and helping once again to keep this channel running. But sadly, that is a very political question. And unfortunately, I cannot answer that because that would get directly into U.S. domestic politics, which is something that we avoid uh, militantly on the channel. But still, thank you so much once again for support and helping this channel to keep running. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Greg Ruddy, who puts in a $20 donation. And thank you very much, Greg, for your first hey! ever Super Chat on the channel. He says, oi, uh, first Super Chat, bro. Hey, keep up the good work. Drink water. Uh, hydrate. He said, yeah, very interesting <laughs> word there to hydrate. He says, slow Ukraine and take someone's question. And cheers, boys. Cheers. And thank you so much, Greg Ruddy, for the support. Your first Super Chat ever. And we know that because you said it was your first Super Chat. And thank you so much for wanting us to keep up the good work. We are going to drink the water. I drank a lot of coffee before the stream, and I'm going to make sure to drink a lot of water afterwards. And thank you so much once again for being a, a a uh, big enjoyer of the channel. Matthew, we need to come up with the Soy Jack Chad meme for viewers of this channel. Like, the Soy Jack is viewers of other channels, and then the Chad Jack is the, the one that's, like, the viewer of this channel. Like, we need to make that meme happen. Um, But beyond that... That would be rather clever. <laughs> that will be very clever. But still, Slavo Ukrainian, long live the Lee Spring Army, and we will make sure to take a live chat. And thank you so much once again to you, Greg Ruddy. Cheers to you, and thank you once again for uh, supporting this channel. For the first time ever in helping to make this stream possible and so matthew what do we got for a live chat and this one's going to go to burke who says i am surprised the russian population is still supporting putin and how bad must the casualties be for a large-scale open revolt against putin to happen i really have no idea because i would have thought by this point it would have happened and it still seems like it's uh way off in the distance i don't really think it will happen uh from the casualties, I think if there's an open uprising against the Russian government, it's going to be from economic tumult only, uh, not from casualties sustained in the war. Uh, and with that, I hope that does address that live chat fairly well. And thank you so much once again, Ruddy, for supporting that. And once again, um, helping us to keep this channel running. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Jolly Hiveling, who puts in a $20 donation. And thank you very much, Jolly, for the uh... support. And they simply said, Peruvian blow. Arr, it be some fine <laughs> Peruvian blow. Oh, man. I'm telling you. Oh, man. You know, it's interesting. It's been oddly quiet lately. Uh, I, I, feel, I feel like a hit piece is just cooking in the background somewhere. Uh, but beyond that, it be some fine Peruvian blow. Uh, but still, thank you so much once again for the support. I hope that does uh, address that quite well. And uh, thank you once again for the support and uh, helping this channel uh, to keep on running. Uh, but, but still, uh, thank you so much once again. And, and, and thank you for the support and helping this channel to be possible. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Brian Perkins, who puts in a $10 hey! donation. Thank you, Brian, very much for that support as well. He says, I've been watching since last spring, and thanks for the time and effort, and would love to see more international news. Myanmar, Sudan, China being China, and my concealed carry is an MFP Shield 2.0, 9mm. And what are your thoughts? And Brian, I would say on the MFP Shield 2.0, I think it has a very small capacity of bullets. I think it's like six rounds. 
And I'm not saying that's that's uh, too few rounds, but if you're a good shot, you all, you only need, really need one bullet actually. Uh, but you don't want to be like uh, Barney Fife with only the one bullet. Me me personally, I would go with a uh, at least ten rounds, and I, the MP shield might have ten rounds. I'm not sure. Um, six to seven. But that's the only six. To, yeah, okay, yeah, that's too few in my opinion. Six is too little. Um, I need at least ten, or at least me. Uh, but enforcer, what say you? I would say, Brian, I, th I think that's a good carry. I mean, it's, it's carry with the ones I carry, carry like seven rounds too. So not bad uh, because, you know, most most firefights are over within two to three shots, especially in a normal, uh, like, instance of self-defense. They're usually over with each side firing about two to three shots, and that's the end of it. Uh, so you don't really need, like, 10 or 19. You, it's always better to have more ammo, but in reality, you don't really need it most times. Uh, so I think it's a fairly good carry, and it looks like a pretty good pistol, too. Uh, but thank you so much, Brian Purgis, for your first support to the channel ever! And we did get to it! Uh, because I saw you asking, are you going to get to it? And we always address every Super Chat, so we will get to them. Uh, it just sometimes takes time, and we, we thank everyone for their patience and, and, and you know, waiting for the Super Chat to be gotten to. Uh, but still, uh, I would love to cover more international news, like the, what's going on in Myanmar, Sudan, and China, uh, and everything like that. But sadly, there's only so much time in a day. And right now, Ukraine is really our focal point, our focus on news, uh, because there's just so much happening there on a daily basis that's interesting enough uh, to make an entire segment off of. And so... Hopefully in the future we will be able to span out into international news topics because we would love to do that and we would love to become not just a Ukraine war news channel but a world news channel because that would be very fun for both Matthew and me and also allow us to stretch our wings and really start to spread out into other completely different topics and get to talk about those. Uh, but still, I hope that does address that quite well, Brian. And thank you once again for support and helping this channel to be possible. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Romeo S., who puts in a ten dollar donation and says, "Great job, perfect job, great, great job, perfect job." I was born in Albania and I grew up in Greece. I moved to England 22 years ago. Great job, both of you. Great job, the best. Thank you. And thank you so much, Cabrero, for the incredible support and helping this channel keep on running. And thank you so much for sharing a little bit of your story. Cool little thing, Romeo. Um, yes, about uh these uh, the country of Albania was that Albania actually has an unbelievable amount of bunkers, like small man-sized bunkers. Let me see if I can take y'all down the street in the capital of Albania and show y'all one of these little bunkers, because they should be somewhere around here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Not seeing them. Why am I not seeing them? They should be everywhere. There's like hundreds of thousands of these little bunkers. And I'm not seeing them. I'm not seeing them. Wait a minute. If there would be one, they're going to be out here. Where the hell are the little Albanian bunkers? Let me go pull them up. They're probably just easier to go pull them up at this point. Albanian bunkers. Here we go. There's an entire Wikipedia article called Bunkers in Albania, uh, the fun times of the of the good old days, where 750,000 of these man-sized bunkers were built across the entirety of Albania for really no reason rather than they could. Uh, it's, it's a really interesting story, and they still exist to this day uh, all over the place. Here's one of them built onto the side of a house. Here's one of them built in a cemetery. Here's another one that was built on the beach. Here are some others that were built in a line. Here are some bunkers that happen to have been built in a line near a mountain range, right there. Here are some more bunkers that happen to be near some uh, sections of the Berlin Wall. Um, here is another bunker that appears to have been uprooted and uh, has been removed from its shell. This one was actually made in 1979, you can see it right there. Uh, and then, of course... 750,000 of these things exist throughout all of Albania. It's a really interesting story. Um, but beyond that, we're not going to go into like the deep rabbit hole story of why they exist. It's just kind of neat. Uh, but beyond that, thank you so much for sharing your story from moving from Albania to Greece and then moving to Britain. I hope you've been enjoying it in Britain. It's a beautiful place. Uh, and thank you once again, Romeo, for supporting this channel and helping us to keep it running. And I hope that you enjoyed that I shared a little cool fun fact about the country of Albania. And so with that, Thank you so much once again, and we are on to the next one. 
And the next one goes to Keith Corrigan, who puts in a $10 donation. And he says, y'all rock. And thank you, Keith. Hey, and thank you so much, Keith. We rock. And thank you so much once again for the support and helping this channel to keep on running. Because folks like you help to make it possible, Keith. And so thank you once again. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Abadja Bro once again, who puts in a seven. It says, Enforcer, if you were president, what three main points would you tell people defiant to support Ukraine or believe this is only a European issue? Well, Badger Bro, that is a good question. A good question right there for sure. And let me make sure that I can read it. For some reason, it's not showing up on my spreadsheet. Dang, damn it. <laughs> but to answer your question, the three points I bring up as president is one, it's an America's strategic interest. Two, it's a possible economic, well, it is an inevitable economic partner in the future. And three, uh, we are continuously putting our rivals into the dirt. And that is one of the most important things that can be secured in foreign uh, affairs, is putting our rivals into dirt. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does uh, address that fairly well. Uh, and I do not believe that's a European affair because the Western sphere and the European sphere exists entirely because of American involvement. So it is entirely an American affair. Uh, and so with that, I thank you so much once again for support, Badger Bro. I hope that does address that well. And thank you so much once again for supporting this channel and helping us to keep it running. And with that, we are on to the next one. And our next one is going to go to Nick. Still thinking, LLC. And also, uh, by the way, CK Bold as well. And they each put in a $5 donation. And they each wanted a live chat question, please. And we shall grab those right now. Two of them for Nick and CK. And the first one is going to go to Plexus Gaming. Who says, any idea why the progress of the Russian freedom has slowed over the past few days? Uh, from what we understand, the reason why the pre-Russian army has slowed their movement is because Russian armed forces have been brought into the area, so there's not, now actual friction and resistance against their advance, which has slowed it considerably over the past 36 to 48 hours. Uh, that's what we understand at the moment. Of course, that is entirely dependent on that assumption being uh, correct, but we are assuming that it's correct at the moment until we get information to contradict it. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does address that the best I can. And thank you so much to the both of you for sponsoring live chats and helping this channel to keep on running. And with that, uh, Matthew, I was just wanting to make sure really quickly, because I don't think we addressed this one. Did we cover Greaser Bub, the uh, the original um, Super Chat? Greaser Bub, the original? Uh, I don't think we have. Where is that one? Uh, it's in my spreadsheet in fan funding, uh, and it was a $10 Super Chat, and it said, thank God for a U.S. Patriot. There is no other substitute. And then it said, oh, by the way, Matt, a $5 foot long is now $8.99. LOL, inflation. <laughs> hey, he's probably right. And also, by the way, Greaser, I'm sorry for missing that one. I don't know how I missed it, um, but it's not in my spreadsheet. So thank you for catching that, Enforcer. But you're probably right, though. The inflation probably has brought the $5 foot long up to $8.99. Uh, um, and it's probably not worth it. Because Subway, honestly, kind of sucks. But Enforcer, what say you? I'd have to agree with Matthew. Subway sucks uh meatballs <laughs> but beyond that <laughs> i gotta <laughs> i gotta thank you so much uh for the support and helping us to get a five dollar foot long because uh because you know it, it's something that we, we we don't really like but we'll eat one <laughs> we'll have one uh but beyond oh, that oh man i bet the hot dog man wants a five dollar foot long oh man i would kill for a five dollar foot long i would kill for it no. Shoot it in a second. Come on, man. You can do it. <laughs> the engine explodes. Aww. Aww. Beyond that, thank God for the U.S. Patriot systems in Ukraine. They are truly fantastic. And there really is no other substitute for the Ukrainians right now. It is the longest range and most effective uh, air defense system in terms of accuracy that the Ukrainians have within their possession. And that is a massive asset for Ukrainian air defense. And so with that... Thank you so much, Greaser Bob, once again for support. Sorry that we missed that because we almost missed it. Uh, but nevertheless, I always make sure, Matthew and me, to make sure that we get all of the Super Chats. Uh, and sometimes some of them end up being missed on spreadsheets. But with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Butchie777 once again, who puts in a 10-pound donation. And thank you very much, Butchie, as always, hey! for that support. And no comment to address. But Enforcer, what's saying you? And I gotta thank you, Butchie777, for the support and helping this channel to keep on running. Because folks like you 
How to make it possible? You are one of our British viewers and have been here forever and ever and ever. One of the true old guards by the original definition and the renewed definition. And I got to thank you once again for being here with us tonight, throwing in another 10 pounds, quite heavy, and saying thank you because we thank you, Butchy777. And so with that, we are now on to the next one, but thank you so much once again. And the next one goes to Jonathan Scott, uh, who puts it a five and says, Do the F O R L. Freedom of Russia Legion, have any sustainment units, or are they being directly resupplied by Ukraine, and they're burning a lot of ammo fast and a few hundred grad rounds at least? And from what we understand, and I gotta thank you for the support, uh, from what we understand, uh, the Freedom of Russia Legion does not have any sustainment units, it's entirely a combat unit, and apparently they have Ukrainian uh, support units integrated uh, into their sustainment, pretty much. So it's entirely Ukrainian-run supply line from what we know. Um, because we've also seen that proved in the form of MI-8s that have been airlifting supplies into the area of Kazinka, rarely, uh, being operated by Ukrainian air crews and clearly indicating that they're Ukrainian because they have Ukrainian roundels on the helicopters. So going off of that, I would have to say uh, that they are being sustained entirely by the Ukrainian armed forces and they have no sustainment units that are integrated into their unit to speak of. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does address that well. Very good question, by the way, Jonathan. And thank you once again for being here forever and supporting this channel and helping it to be possible. And with that, we are on to the next one. And up next, a big shout out to Andy L, who threw in a $5 donation without a comment. And Andy, thank you very much as well for uh, helping to keep the channel running and helping to keep my mouth, hopefully, running as well and working where it actually says words instead of noises. Uh, but thank you, Andy. And up next, we have a $5 super chat from Loren. Uh, who says, a week to week, so can't get the flag, but can drop a very little bit here and there and take a question from the chat. And thank you so much for the support, Lorin. And thank you once again for helping this channel to keep on running. And thank you so much for dropping a little bit here and there. It means a lot to us, and I hate that, to hear that you can't get a flag, but we still appreciate that you enjoy the channel and uh, want to help us to keep it running nonetheless. It means a lot to us, and we will make sure to get a question from the chat, Loren. But also, really quickly, Matthew, it looks like Andy L. Uh, wanted us to take one from the live chat as well. So we're actually going to be getting two live chats, one in honor of Andy L. Super Chat and one in honor of Loren Super Chat. And so with that, what do we got for our first live chat? And the first one goes to Eugene Minton, who says, you guys want to speculate on if the Russian Freedom Forces will free Russia or possibly just a region to use, a, to, uh, use as a demilitarized buffer? Uh, I have a feeling that they're only going to demilitarize a region and even just a part of a region at that. Uh, I don't think they're even going to be taking over the entirety of the Belgrade Oblast, maybe just the areas surrounding Belgrade City or Belgrade City included. I don't really think they have any kind of massive ambitions to free Russia because they certainly don't have the manpower at the moment to make that possible. And it looks like even right now with Russian forces being moved into the area, their progress is being stymied greatly, uh, actually just dealing with the forces at hand. Uh, so I hope that does address the first live chat well, and we are now on to the second one. And the second one is going to go to Alliance Pierre, who says, Hello, Enforcers. Hello, oh, Leo. He says, Slava LSA. And how long before we see our drone MOS expand to include small, fast attack drones as they're being used in Ukraine? Um, I would have to say... I think, it, I think it's already included at the moment right now, I'd actually believe, because I, I heard that the Ukrainians are pretty much creating a brand new branch of the armed forces, which is the drone force. So I have a feeling that the smaller drones are already being included in that armed force or are being integrated at the moment, from what I understand. And so with that, I think he, I think he means like how long before like the, uh, the U.S. Army has like a drone MOS for like small fast attack drones? Uh, they probably might not have one ever because... The U.S. Army is going to integrate the drones into the infantry, uh, most likely, uh, and the infantry are pretty much just going to use those uh, probably... Eh probably is like a grenadier using a grenade launcher. And I think that's actually the person in the unit who would be trained to operate the FPV drones or the smaller fast attack drones. They're, it's probably going to be the grenadiers of the unit uh, based off of the current army uh, uh, squad structure. It'll probably be the grenadiers or the AT guys who are trained to uh, operate the drones. And then everyone in the, everyone in the infantry squad will carry around a couple of FPV drones for that grenadier to use. That might be how the army... Uh, uh, tries to restructure 
uh, it will not really restructure, but integrate those kinds of fast attack drones into those squads. Because I don't think they're ever going to dish that out to a specific role where they just kind of sit in a cubicle or something uh, or sit in, a, in an abandoned house and then fly the drones from there. I think it's actually going to be a part of each squad instead, uh, which would be a lot more efficient as well because then the drones are available on demand to that squad right when they need them, right when the squad leader says they have to have those drones. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does... Uh, address that quite well and uh, thank you so much once again Andy L uh, and also on top of that and let me make sure to uh, recognize both of y'all uh, thank you so much Andy L right there and also Loren both of y'all for sponsoring those live chats and thank you once again for both being massive viewers of this channel enjoying it greatly uh, and also helping it to keep on running and with that we are on to the next one and the next one goes to made in Canada 182 who puts in the five and says, maybe that BMP drove over the other one because the driver hadn't learned how to drive manual yet. LOL. Aren't you, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you what, I almost forgot about that. Y'all never let me live that down. I, I, I said, do you know how to drive men well in, a, in, a, in the poll question? And I'm never going to live it down. I won't let myself live it down. Driving men well. It's going to be on a t-shirt one day. But thank you very much, Made in Canada, for that support. Enforcer, what say you? Hey, and I got to thank you so much for support. Made in Canada. And I got to agree. Manuel is a tough thing to drive. I've tried to drive Manuel. Manuel is undrivable, undoable, unworkable even. I, I would say an absolute loss. Uh, but still, thank you so much once again for support Made in Canada and helping this channel to keep on running. And not only that, thank you so much for throwing in a good joke and reminding us of that funny poll that we had a while ago. But with that... Thank you so much once again. I hope that does address that well. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Sammy J, who puts in a five dollar donation, and he says, <laughs> "And and yeehaw, and yeehaw. and thank you so much for the support, Sammy J, and helping this channel to keep on running." And with that, yeehaw. damn, God, this is yeehaw. And with that, <laughs> and with that, right there, we are on to the next one. <laughs> And the next one goes to George A, who puts in a ten dollar donation. And thank you very much, George, for that support. Uh, he says Bridget from Cornwall was lovely in the moonlight against the cliffs of Dover on the ferry long ago. Is that like code? <laughs> is that code or something? I don't know what that means. I don't know. Um. Well, the cliffs of Dover is a really interesting place. Did y'all know that the cliffs of Dover are made of white chalk? Pretty cool. Did y'all know that that's also a uh, Disney um, the cruise line cruise ship in the uh, port of Dover? Kind of cool. Is I didn't that even... right? Yeah, that's right. That's right, Governor. That's right, Governor. Um, but let's see here. Hmm, Dover's really been getting a lot of upgrades lately. The uh, Euro Tunnel um, ought to be somewhere around here, I believe, near Temple Ewell. Um, is it? Is it? Huh? 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 Does this just go straight into Dover? It does. It does. It's mm -mm. it's not coming out there. Where the hell does the Euro Tunnel come out at? Oh well, I'll just have to give up on that, I suppose. Actually, no, it's right here. I think. Nope, that's not it. That is certainly not it. Uh, but anyways, I have to cut my my search short for the Euro Tunnel. It's somewhere around this area. Uh, but beyond that. I gotta thank you so much once again for support, George A. I, sadly, I don't know what that means, but still, thank you so much for supporting this channel and helping us to keep this thing running because folks like you helped make this possible. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Mike, who puts in the $5 donation. And Mike, I'm going to refrain from reading this one because I don't like to take his name in vain. Uh, so I'm going to refrain from it. But Enforcer, what say you? And I thank you so much for supporting Mike and helping this channel to keep on running um, because your support, of course, helps us to make this thing possible. Uh, but we try and refrain from getting into politics or uh, religion a great deal. Um, I am a Christian, but, you know, we don't really... Uh, this channel isn't really the place uh, nor the time to try and profess that kind of stuff. That's more so for church on Sundays. Uh, but still, thank you so much once again. I hope that does address that well. And we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to the Badger Bro once again, who puts in a five dollar donation and says, "Enforcer, the other yeah, the other day you mentioned you wanted to visit Chechia. Uh, the CZ Shadow Two series is made in Chechia. And what are your thoughts?" Hmm. The CZ Shadow Two. It's not that great looking, in my opinion. It looks like an Olympic target rifle, oh, the target pistol, to me. Um, it's all right. 
but it's not something I'd really like fallen over. You know what I mean? Like it, it just doesn't really have that style I'm looking for. But um, oh, uh, let's see here. Hmm. There they have the Bren up here, of course. They're selling those Brens. Two thousand dollars? Uh, nah, I wouldn't get that. Um, let's see here. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not really a big fan of CZ stuff. It's all right. Yeah, it's all right. Um, but I hope that does address that well, Badger bro. <laughs> um, because I'm not really a big fan of CZ stuff. More of a Colt fan myself when it comes to uh guns or uh let's see, not just a Colt. Uh, well, yeah, really just Colts at the moment. I really oh. like Colt pistols. Uh oh, <laughs> but with that, thank you so much for giving support. I hope that does address that the best I can. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Yusuf Yoyoman, who puts in a two. And it sadly does not leave a comment. We also got a one from Mama Mentality, as well as Damien Hatfield. And there's no comments to address, but thank you, Yus uh, Yusuf, Mamba, and Damien very much for that support. And enforce you. What say you? And I got to thank the each of you for your support and helping this channel to keep on running. It means a lot to us. We appreciate it greatly. And I cannot say enough how much each of y'all's support means to this channel. You know, I didn't throw in comments, but the support says a lot. It means a lot. And it, of course, helps this channel to keep on moving forward. And so thank y'all once again. And we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Neil Vizanat, who puts in a two. And says, quid is to the pound as buck is to the dollar. And quid. I, I almost forgot about that term as well. That the British like to say quid for some reason. I have no idea where y'all came up with the word quid. Uh, but now I remember it. But Enforcer, what say you? Man, I'll kill the squid for a quid. Call me. But <laughs> you know, just start like a British rap. Uh, but beyond that, uh, wait a minute. Call me. Wait, what was that song, Matthew? Something call me something. Wait, I'll pull that rifle from West Gloucestershire or something like that. But beyond that, uh, I never heard that one. Oh, wait, wait, lying around in a rover. Call me Ed Sharp over when he sees his auctions over. You know, something like that. But still, thank you so much once again for supporting Neil Vizanot and helping this channel to keep on running. It is greatly appreciated. And I, I'd have to say, I do remember that. And I thank you so much for reminding us of that of that fact, Neil Vizanot. And so with that, thank you so much once again. I hope that does address that well. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Carrie Ann Corzo, who puts in a two and says, Hi, guys, and how about an angry penguin? And I don't know what happened to Angry <laughs> Penguin, Carrie Ann Corzo. I don't know what happened to him. He hadn't been back in a good minute. Uh, apparently, he's still around uh, because some folks speak to him. But he hadn't been back on the channel, sadly. And we do miss the Angry Penguin very much. But thank you very much for the support. And Enforcer, what say you? And uh, I would have to say, sadly, um, I don't know what Angry Penguin is. Angry Penguin, I was told a while ago, was taking a break from the war, and so was taking a break from this channel as well, but I haven't seen him come back lately. Uh, I don't know if he's just taking a permanent break from the war, which some people do, uh, because there are some people who were with us at the very beginning of the channel's history who aren't here with us anymore. They didn't leave on bad terms, it's just that they got tired of the war and moved on. Uh, I don't know where Angry Penguin is, but hopefully he'll return, because many people miss him, and we do too. Uh, and so with that... Thank you so much once again for the support. I hope that does address that at least fairly well about what has happened to Angry Penguin from what we know. Um, but with that, we are on to the next one. And we have one more. This one's from Kim Ott, who puts in a $10 donation. And that's his 10th ever Super Chat on a live stream. So thank you very much, Kim, as always, for that support. He says, hey. what are your plans after the war? Uh, the plans after the war would have been um, to round out this, well, originally would have been to round out this YouTube channel and then focus on law school entirely. But now that we've dropped out of law school and this is our this is our full-time business and job is running this YouTube channel and covering news from the war in Ukraine and around the world, it would then shift from being news of the war in Ukraine to news about Russia and Ukraine specifically and what's going on in both of those countries. And then also shifting to cover more international news, a lot more international news, and also probably move on into long form documentary videos as well, finally, because we probably have the time to be able to do that. Uh, so that's really what we're planning on doing right now. The channel would not die. In fact, the channel would continue on like it always has. It's just that it would take uh, on different kinds of news and a lot more of it. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does address that well. Thank you so much, Kim Ott, once again, for the support to this channel and helping us to keep it running. And with that, we've actually run out of Super Chats. So we're actually going to have some time, quite some time, to answer live chats tonight. Live chats, Matthew. Uh, and, um, and, and Matthew, um, 
who, who is speaking with such foul language? My goodness. Like they never learn manners. Tis, tis. Uh, excuse me. How, how dare you, sir? How, how dare you? I mean, they're, they're asking, where do we get our info? Where in the world do you get your manners? Where the hell do those come from? Um, uh, I, I don't need to take comments from a junior minister. I didn't need to take comments from the junior. <laughs> my, me and my beautiful... Order! Oh, order! Oh, order! Oh, um, but still, with that, let's get on into those live chats, Mandy. What do we got? And first up, jumping into our Morse code decoders of the stream tonight, we had Cliff Simonson, Mark Hodges, Earl Bernou, Paul Schultz, Kevin J, Stilchin, David Millsaps, and Toxic Bananas. They said, LSA Signal Corps reports tonight's Morse code copy is, Russian forces are getting beat by free Russian forces, and the whole area is a war zone. Long live the, S uh, excuse me, long live the LSA. And... That's the sound of money. And y'all hit that down on the nail. That is the jackpot of the night. Y'all got the Morse code message correct. I got to congratulate y'all once again for getting that correct on the 756th day of the war because y'all are always getting that dead on the nail. Very impressive. And so with that, we're now about to be moving on into the rest of our live chats. But after this man, this man in the live chat said, where the F do you get your info? Then Matthew said, why are you swearing? And then they said, what swearing? Oh, goodness. He's a gaslighter. Oh, goodness. He's a gaslighter. He's a gaslighter. It's one of hot dogs, men. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's it's someone from somewhere else. God knows where. But they crawled out of their hobble to ask us a stupid question, cussing it. And then we say, why are you cussing? They go, what cussing? That's like shooting someone dead in the street. And then they go, why don't you kill that man? And you go, what man? What do you mean I killed him? And so it's like, you just shot him in why front of us. Don't gaslight me, good sir. Don't you gaslight me, good sir! I use LEDs! <laughs> but anyways, with that, let's get on into that question. The question of the night. In our first live chat question, is going to go to David Millsaps. He says, is the Romanian unit in Russia all simply volunteers by themselves as individuals or in some way sanctioned by the Romanian government? They're individuals unto themselves, not uh, attached in any official capacity to the government of Romania. And so with that, I hope that does address that quite well. And we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to uh, Mr. Diggs. He says, France, British, and U.S. troops at the border. Uh, ready to enter Ukraine, question mark. He says, let's see. Uh, what do you think about this? It was on another channel. Um, oh, um, well, I, I mean, they're, they're always near the border. Um, they are NATO countries, after all, and there are foreign bases in those countries. Uh, so they could be enter, ready to enter Ukraine. They may not be. Um, but they are there. They are there near the border. That is quite sure. Um, but also, I have to say this really quickly. I don't know if people know this or not. But when you come into this live chat, and you bring up the names of other channels, sometimes, sometimes, the way we take that is, is that people are trying to advertise other channels here on this one. Uh, and we don't encourage our viewers to go and do that uh, to other channels because it's it's quite rude, actually, because we're trying to pretty much just suck uh, viewers straight off of their channel into ours by doing something like that. Uh, and, and so it is it is etiquette wise a little rude, um, you know, to, to bring it up because uh, because I have seen that nowadays now that the channel is really starting to blow up by leaps and bounds and we're getting you know, 1.2 to 1.3 thousand subscribers a day, people are crawling out of the woodworks trying to name drop other channels here in our live chat, or even other channels come on here and try and get something from us. Um, and that is something I've started to notice is happening at a much higher speed. Uh, you know, it's, it's not that we can't see what's going on. It's a little see-through, and it seems a little rude, but, you know, it, it is what it is. And I know that you were only bringing that up in that live chat, um, saying that it came from another channel. What do you think of this? Uh, but I thought I'd, I thought I'd mention that for a quick second, you know, because if y'all ever see, uh, your comment get removed from the live chat, but you're not banned or anything, um, and we just remove the chat that you put in, it's probably for that reason that it, it looked like it was at trying to advertise another channel, uh, here in our live chat, which we're generally against. Uh, but with that, I hope that does address that quite well. And we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to O-Tubes, uh, who says, Chinese mercenaries are fighting for Russia and Ukraine and also targeting citizens of Cuba, Armenia, and Kazakhstan uh, and India to fight in Ukraine for Russia. And what are your thoughts? Um, I would say... Um... 
Can you reread that again? I would say, um, it says, Chinese mercenaries are fighting for Russia and Ukraine, and also targeting citizens of Cuba, Armenia, and Kazakhstan, and India to fight for Ukraine for Russia, and what are your thoughts? Uh, from what I've heard, though, that, uh, that is true. We have seen small uh, contingents of uh, foreign fighters or mercenaries, whatever you'd like to call them, that are fighting for the Russians. So it does sound as though the, that is a true statement from the information that we've been able to find. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does address that well, and we are on to the next one. And there actually is no next one. I don't have a next one. That was actually, uh, we've run through, actually, uh, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've run through 15 live chats between our Super Chat request for live chats and the live chat segment, and we're fresh out. Oh, well, um, well, it, it's happened again. Um, I wish we could get a countdown, at least, where you're like, okay, this is the second. But it's fine. It's fine. We will find something, some way to round this out. Um, let's see here. Um, maybe We want the marmot. Oh, well, I mean, sure. I mean, that's a way we can round this thing out, so we can just go get the marmot. Well, who's a, who's a lucky last person throwing the lucky last question of the night? It is Jacob Laguzzi, and he's thrown in the marmot. Hey! It's the marmot! Oh, hello there. Hey, Dad. Could I interest you in a plum or a rock? Would you like some rock? Fine Peruvian rock. It's the best rock. Get some rock. Oh man, I'm cooking up a hot one on 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 the on the hip piece. Oh man, really gonna get him lose another four hundred subs. What? But anyways, that that I suppose. Oh, and and, and George Tincher threw in a five, and he said, "Can I have a marmot?" And uh, you, you got one. He's got some. He's got some marmot. <laughs> On the screen. Um, and also, um, now now everyone's throwing in super chats. Good googly moogly. Um, we have a ten dollar super chat from CIA accounts payable. Um, and 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 CIA accounts payable said, I almost forgot. Invoice zero 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 one point one black programs. Sci operations development. And thank you so much, CIA oh accounts payable. Oh my goodness. They just they're just paying us out in the open like that. They are. They're starting to pay us out in the open. We're going to be in the Illuminati before long, Matthew. Before long. <laughs> but still, thank you so much for the support, CIA accounts payable. Thank you for the support. We greatly appreciate it. And Sally Canuck, our LSA, uh, well, actually, our Canadian Navy veteran from uh, London, Ontario, said, keep on rocking, guys, and threw in a $10 Canadian rocking. super chat. And we're going to keep on rocking because we got the moment. Right here, selling the rock right there. Um, so thank you so much, Sully Canuck, for the support. I hope that does address that quite well. And finally, last but not least, we got Badger Bro throwing in a dollar fifty. Well, actually, that's not last but not least, but we have Badger Bro throwing in a dollar and fifty cent super chat with the hot dog in it. The nice little hot dog with extra relish, extra triple relish. Uh, and also, by the way, we got one minute until the flag pre-order uh, closes. Uh, like, literally, one minute from now. Uh, so if you want, well, you better hurry, because it is literally about to end in one single minute. But, Sparsy Sicilian threw in a dollar super chat. First super chat history of the channel. Greatly appreciative. And he said, UAPs, check out Chioppa Firearms. I like the rhino. And I'll have to tell you, Chioppa Firearms... Quite an interesting group of people. Let me go pull up their company. And let's go look at it a little bit. Chopper. Um, we're rejecting the cookies. And I'm over 18, of course. Legal and all, you know that. Um, but nevertheless, let's go look at the Chopper forums. Let's see, we got the Dan rifles. And then we got the handguns. And I believe the Rhino is a revolver. Oh, yes, yeah, it's that revolver with the barrel on the bottom. I don't know how I feel about oh. that. Oh my, I, I don't know about that. It's a little bizarre. Um, but I mean, it's kind of interesting of a design, but I don't know how I feel about it in reality. Really? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but still, thank you so much for the support, Spicy Sicilian. And thank you once again for helping this channel to keep on running. And the Rhino's all right. I haven't shot one personally, but maybe one day I'll be able to. But still... Thank you so much once again for the... Oh, it's the moment! Oh, but still, thank oh my you... God, man, you scared the hell out of me. I heard that coming out the door out of my office over here, and I was like, oh, shoot. I was, <laughs> I was like, somebody's breaking in. 
<laughs> the song like someone is breaking in. Um, but with that, that is the end of this night stream. I got to thank all of y'all so much once again for watching. Uh, at the peak tonight, there were 8,000 of y'all here. 53,000 people have viewed this stream before it ended. I'm greatly appreciative to every single one of y'all for watching this stream tonight. I hope y'all are able to get a laugh. I hope you're all able to enjoy the news a good bit. And also, I hope that everyone who wanted to get an LSA flag was able to get an LSA flag. Uh, of course, the pre-orders just closed one minute ago at this point in the stream. But I thank you all so much for ordering an LSA flag. It is unbelievable how well that went. Uh, and it's gone so well, we had to shut it down halfway before it was supposed to. Because we wouldn't be able to fill out all the orders if it kept on running until Saturday at midnight. Uh, but nevertheless... Thank you so much once again to everyone who watched tonight. I thank you all once again. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And you can support us on Patreon if you want to. Link in the description below. You don't have to. Just like you don't have to super chat. You don't have to support us on Patreon. It's just something you could do if you want to. Uh, and also, Butchy777 threw in a five-pound super chat right here at the end. And he said, any more news on the LSA coffee? I love brewing up in the morning with the LSA. Great question, Butchy777. And sadly, we can't give you an answer on that right now because the coffee... The coffee brand line thing that we're working on has now entered the realm of um, of classified information that is given out on a need-to-know basis. And so, unfortunately, we cannot talk about it now because it is deep within the bowels of the Lee Spring Army and is being worked on at this moment. So we can't give any exact details because that would be a little bit too behind the scenes of a look right now on that. But we will let you all know more about that in the future. I can't tell you all when, but it will be in the future. Uh, but still... Thank you all so much once again for watching. Good night, good luck, stay safe, take care, Slav Ukraini, and long live the Lee Spring Army. The Lee Spring Army will never die. And good night, folks, and Tiz was a very good stream tonight, and I did quite enjoy the stroll down memory lane in Britain, and I do hope to go back one day once again. But I hope tonight's stream was informative, and be sure to join us tomorrow at 10 p.m. Eastern for another one. And with that, Slav Ukraine. Hear him, Salava, and good night. We'll see you all tomorrow. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Leafs Spring Army sends its regards. Редактор